So, as we left off, like a hundred years ago, many moons ago, it's it's been like ten thousand years, like two forge days. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> what's, that's the part that was crazy. I have a literal calendar here, right? I have the actual like Galarian calendar that I mark off where we're at days wise. Like it's the same day the marshal finishes training. <laughs> It feels like we should be weeks past that, but it's just been so long we haven't been able to, to make things happen. Before we begin... Oh, jeez. Before we begin... Points. Points. <laughs> points for days. <laughs> that man has been hoarding. Look wow, look at him go. Wow. That's what leaving PaizoCon over the, the weekend does just, for you. you. Yeah, that's true. Everyone, you might have a huge surplus from PaizoCon if you've been hoarding them. Stad Shage, Rez. Somebody Rez. doesn't want you to die. Rez. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, hold on, I have to find an awkward place. He's got a nice dragon's hoard there that he's doled out to supply everyone's favorite rat bard. And they're just going to sit like there forever. <laughs> Which is probably a very short list of total rat bards, but we of all the rat bards I know... We got two. You're the best. We got me, we got Raz, we got King Mataz. Oh, one of the two of you is the best. Mm. You can figure that out amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but before we uh, get into this here... Thank you, as always, to our sponsor, Paizo, for having us over here on the channel and putting up with the incredible amount of crap we have been <laughs> configuring to make this stream continue functioning uh, and still supporting us, having us here, running their fantastic campaign with this Pathfinder uh, Adventures. And our partners at Sirenscape with the cool sound effects, Ark and Forge, we've come back over to the, for the maps, and now Norse Foundry which we finally get to play around with because we get to do the show and it works and we all have way cooler dice now. You may notice the set of dice I have right here is still in the box. Well, that's because it's a spare set. Uh, we don't actually need this. You should also tell them the names. So, this one is Gladiator, which is pretty neat. I don't know the names of all of your sets off the top of my head. Malachite. I <laughs> Malachite. <laughs> Malachite. That's all that matters. You mean, you mean God. <laughs> That life hack dice. <laughs> don't, don't just roll a 20. You no, can't. that's a five. Okay. <laughs> he only rolls a 20 when it gets you on your nerves. You may have offended the Malachi gods by just rolling them frivolously. But as we... Ha! <laughs> <See? laughs> Loser. Yeah, that seem good. As we <laughs> left off some weeks ago now, the heroes of Breach Hill were still working uh, to push back against the triad operations within the dwarven city of Kovler. We have been here for some forge days, and with these conflicting schedules between the surface calendar and the way dwarves keep track of time, uh, may have really all but lost track of how long you really have been down here. It's been at least a few weeks on the surface that you've spent underground without having seen the light of the sun, which is probably great for people who are allergic to it. And uh, <laughs> Thanks for rubbing that in, like this calamine lotion. But... Please do name them for us. You have made... <laughs> that would be nice. We don't know the names. You have made a lot of progress. Uh, many of the ten guilds that form the Regents Council of the city have come to you, put their trust in your knowledge of the situation that has been dropped at their doorstep, your experience with the Scarlet Triad, and what, they, what that means, what they bring with them, how they work. And you have managed to track them down to a base of operations hidden underneath the Earth Fire District, where the forges roar through the day, and most of the smithing work, most of the real industry of Cobbler takes place. Down here, beneath the ground, deep beneath even the basements of the buildings of the district itself, dozens and dozens of feet beneath the stone bottom of the cave that makes this city, there is a cult a cult dedicated to the dwarven god Droskar, god of forgery and deception, a forgotten son of Torag, as he is often called. Is he a dwarven god? He's a dwarven god. I mean, the same way that, like, Lamashtu is a human god. Just because they're evil doesn't mean they don't belong to the pantheon. Like, know, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, like, Zon Kuthon is still a human god. He's just... Zon Kuthon, our lord and savior. <laughs> Say it right. Or don't say it at all. Technically, you oh, uh, God, Kuthan? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Shaylin's also a human. Shaylin's a human god. Oh. Yeah. She, well, well, she's a god the, across all pantheons. The humans, the, the human pantheon has incorporated some of the other gods. Like Torag is a member of just like the full human pantheon at this point. There is a wide array of human worshippers of Torag, even though he is firmly a dwarven god. But he's like the dwarven god. Their pantheon's a little different. Whereas the most of the gods know on the surface, there's no like god among gods. There's no one above the rest. They just all have their. Uh, it's like the pantheon of Olympus. They, I mean, there's, there's Zeus kind of, but like they all have their own domains. Right, right. And like no, we're gonna pretend anybody's ever listened to Zeus in Greek mythology. <laughs> <laughs> but Zeus, don't do that. Too late. <laughs> Zeus, no. <laughs> <laughs> A brief summary of all of Greek mythology. <laughs> I'll do what I want. <laughs> but uh, um, <laughs> Toreg in the service pantheon, the human pantheon, is just a god with all the rest. Uh, but in the dwarven pantheon, he is kind of the head of the table. He is the father of many of the gods of the pantheon. Uh, many of the other dwarven deities are direct offsprings of Toreg. And most of his children make up those that they worship. So, I guess there's a more patriarchal relationship than there are with many of the surface the surface worshippers. The point is, Droskar is definitely a dwar in the Dwarven Pantheon, even if his worship is perhaps looked down upon, uh, perhaps outlawed entirely in many Dwarven cities. Very much so in the city of Kavler, where just the utterance of his name is... Uh, likely to get you, at the very least, some questioning looks. But how this cult exactly is connected to the Scarlet Triad, or what their direct aims are besides disruption, is largely unknown. So as we left off, we had made our way down to this hidden forge. We had fought our way through the first chamber through an entryway guarded by a pair of stone golems, very uncommon creatures mm. in the, the landscape of Galarian. It is rare to encounter a golem of any kind. First time I've ever seen one. As the, the magic that creates <laughs> these things is, is uh, just truly not well-practiced or well-known. Do you know what else is an uncommon I, happening? A sun shower, apparently. Roisin receiving a hero point. You don't, have to, you don't have to show it for me, but I appreciate the effort. It already happened. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss it? Oh, you there is. There was in there. I was, I was getting my three. I was getting in my yeah, pantheon. Uh, a uh, couple of them apparently there. didn't appear, but there's intended to be one for Roisin, one for Resme, and one for Marshall. Um, a, well, a, a glitch happened. He, he spent 15, 15k. Yeah, 15k and then... was spent. All right. Well, we could do that, uh, and we can look through the uh, the logs later. I'll get I'll get them out. Roisin, a hero point. Resme, a hero point. Who's Durban for? What was the third one? There was Marshall. 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 A hero point. I do remember, in case of lying, all people will be penalized. <laughs> all coming point. in from Tarmas. And... We'll I penalize mean, all We're going into a hidden forge. I have two villain points. It's a good time for you guys to perhaps have and a it's little nothing bit of a stash. Stash. What do you have? What do you mean? Fire resistance isn't a thing. So, it's a fire. I know it's been some time. But as we begin, uh, we are... The golem said just... Fallen. That was the ending of our right. previous session. Just at the end of that combat, as a stone crashed to the floor, uh, the group of you left silent in this room, uh, lit by some car uh, what seemed to almost be miniature small forges uh, carved into the walls itself up around the outside, but most of them unlit. Only one near the stairwell through which you'd entered lit with a small ball of fire. It doesn't appear to be burning from any oil or wood or source that you can see. And the only way to move forward and move on from here appears to be a large set of double doors on the southern end of the room. So how's everybody looking after that? Uh, we were a little beat up, uh, as I recall. Uh, yeah, we, I think we, we, we were. We actually... I mean, we had alchemy. Uh, we got to get back into our situation because yeah. it's been a minute. We had a... We, as the moment I groomed myself. How's uh, hanging out on the stairs? Excellent. <laughs> cool. Damn. So if Only. I remember correctly... We were throwing some magic and alchemy around. I was slightly injured, but that was taken care of with a single use of healing magic. Okay. Yeah. So with some... I was about to say, believe it or not, for the first time, I didn't take a single point of damage. 
I don't believe it. That seems impossible. <laughs> I didn't. You're telling me. Marshall, hit me in the face, Emberbeard. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, I guess it works when the when the the your opponents are literally mindless and just don't hit you in the face. And one of them was trapped behind a wall. And one was kind of stuck behind a wall for quite some time. I mean, yeah. Roshin took some, enough damage for all of us. With, so some, <laughs> applic <laughs> with some applications of Resme's alchemy and some minor magics, I don't think there was any severe damage no. that had come no. through there. So Except be fairly for her, easy. which we had to pump some stuff in. She, you got a little low punched. And with some time to uh, refocus. Maybe about five, ten minutes after these golems had fallen, after the room had become silent. Mm -hmm. What are we all doing as we move through this? Let's just re-establish the exploration mode here. Because, right. boy, I sure don't remember what everything was doing <laughs> a full month ago. Yeah. Uh, Marshall. Um, if I, well, are you still kind of beat up or? No, I look fine. Okay. Because the only other thing I would think is that I'm just, uh, Bracing myself, ready for impact. I'm ready to get this over with. I'm ready to go. We found this dang cult, man. And so, uh, effectively scouting. So that was effectively saying, scouting. Sounds, sounds like scouting. Yes. Marshall's pumped. He's ready to fight some, <gasps> some dudes. That's just just kind of the default state of Marshall, really. Uh, how about you, Trishik? Well, we're going into an enemy holdout of some kind where there are likely to be traps and nefarious devices. I will be seeking. You don't know what exactly they're capable of, but. If you have... Actually, no, you weren't there for Buddy walking into the door that literally showed him the face of God, but... <laughs> <laughs> We're terrifying. level one adventure. Some trauma... Oh, God. Some hey. trauma carries through player characters into the player themselves. <laughs> Never again. Never again. So what if you opened a door and the door ate you alive? It's just a mimic. It happens all the time. Uh, Raz. Um, Raz is going to be humming himself a little song just solid enough for everyone else. We're repeating a spell. Inspire defense. Oh, fair enough. Uh, it's not like your battle with the golems here was silent. If there is anyone beyond that door, they almost certainly know that you're here and have had some minutes to prepare defense even. Besides, it's really but, dropping on an else. Yeah, sneaking is probably out of the question at this point, unless nobody's home. The golem, the golem <laughs> battle is a little wakey. I mean, wakey. barbarian still. <laughs> Bard still. This is yeah. If you kill everyone, then then nobody will know you're here. Exactly. It's a legitimate way to play the game. It only matters yeah, if word gets out. <laughs> no Roshin. Uh, Roshin, uh, all subtleties out the door. She's just ready to press ahead and get punched in the face some more. And her shield hasn't been destroyed yet, so she's going to keep that in front of her. Which is just a minor miracle, isn't it? It's spectacular. Didn't I remember? Did you not throw it on the ground at the start of that last fight in two hand? I don't think you blocked the golems. You, I don't think I two-handed. Uh, no, I was you know, my my dear my dear friend uh, Resme enlarged me as on a. Oh large, yeah, that's right. You're still big. Oh ground. right, it was on the ground when you got enlarged. <laughs> so you I couldn't was, pick it, it up. Was a tiny, so I couldn't pick it up. <laughs> and this tiny little hand buckler. <laughs> little tiny. What you don't think you can block with a little hand buckler, a little dice tray attached to your, your knuckles? I mean, that, I mean, the rules is written. I think it still gives me plus two. Yeah, get good, Scrub Perry. Yeah. <laughs> All of that so I could call her big sister and mean it. Well, Resume, <laughs> as you prepare to move deeper into the Hidden Forge, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to detect magic, so I'm just going to repeat that cantrip. That's fair enough. Uh, so, rubble strewn throughout this room from the fragments of the golems that have been at this point fairly largely pulverized by the efforts of Marshall, Rasheen, and Trishik, actually, I believe, that have pretty decent amount of work just ripping it's into them with his hands. Three twenties in a row will do that. Yeah, you. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure actually just clawed a stone golem to pieces. Yep. Which is just a horrifying image, honestly. <laughs> it's actually still animated. It's just like the, the pieces of the just wiggling, around. kind of <laughs> vibrating gently on the floor. and a, 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 a very subtle clattering. The pebbles just constantly disturbing themselves. These last little bits of magic leaving. What do you do? Why well, did everybody look at me like I'm the... <laughs> <laughs> I just look vaguely down the table, and then everyone else apparently oh. looks into you. Yeah. I, well. I suppose we had best go through that door, because it's really the only way we're going to get anywhere. I Let's clean this place out. Just say the word, and I'll kick it open. I mean, I, I really do think that uh, Roshin should go through since, uh, you know, she's she's been a pretty big deal today. At the very least, let me check it. We don't know what might be here. And as you all you have said. had some time to kind of sit 
while you're tending to your wounds and you know, looking around this chamber a little bit, uh, it is a very barren entryway. There's nothing much among the walls of the, of the floor here save for the stairs that came down the pedestals where these two golems once stood posing as statues, you know, the thing the golems do. Uh, but above this double door on the southern end of the room, anybody who can read Dwarven uh, would be able to see... Uh, I, one of you would try to look at it before. The but, one who doesn't have religion. Yeah. Right, you had read it, but you just didn't understand really what it was. Uh, but you'd all clearly be able to see the words profess the faith in large blocked letters uh, with just a slight angle above this doorway. Uh, even if you don't speak Dwarven, there are clearly prominent squared runes that at this point, just having been in Kavlar for so long, you would all certainly recognize the language even if you hadn't been able to beforehand. <laughs> but who is opening the door? I'm going to arrange yourselves how, uh, how you please. I the door is in the center of the southern end of the room here. I think you were checking the door, and yeah. then once you give me the all clear, machine, I'll press through it. So you want me to go ahead and check it? Uh, no, you don't need to uh, roll a perception. It is not, in fact, locked or anything. It's just a large double door. I'll get up. Oh, in that case, Roshin will just press through that door and press into the next room. And as you press this open, uh, you would see that this opens into a chamber a fair bit smaller uh, than the one that you're all currently standing in, and one that has many more potential avenues for exploration. Doors coming off of each end of this, what appears to be just almost a connecting hallway. A, a relatively large for a hallway. Uh, it angles around to the right in almost a large L bend as it extends deeper into this underground complex. Uh, the area you're standing in here is about 15 feet across uh, with a door straight ahead of you, one to your left, uh, what are probably several more to your right around this corner. But you see a lone figure standing nearby the door on your left, maybe 10 feet back. Uh, rapier already drawn and in hand, and surprisingly, a figure that you all recognize as the fortunate cave scream. Hmm. Standing there having a, in a clearly defensive stance, uh, obviously she has heard what was going on there, but hadn't come through to investigate herself, perhaps uh, aware that whatever the outcome had been, <laughs> if it was somebody that killed the golems, she wasn't going to fight them alone, and if the golems had killed you, there was no immediate need for her to investigate. But her face changes immediately as the door opens to one almost of surprise. Uh, that no one that, that it would be immediately recognizable to everyone uh, before it would shift back to this kind of set look of determination. And you're detecting magic, correct? Can you roll me uh, a perception check? Uh, that's going to be a 32. Uh, so with a 32, your spell is constantly detecting a few minor arrows throughout the area. You can tell that these forge-like recesses up around the tops of these rooms uh, are apparent. They seem to be holding some kind of a magical fire that burns continuously just to illuminate the area to some extent. Uh, but you also can tell that the fortunate here has very much come equipped. Uh, several magical signatures radiate off of her weapon, her armor, some other things. She is uh, very well geared to defend herself if necessary. I don't right know what I expected. Oh, oh, this is the fortunate. Look, oh. everyone, it's the fortunate. Oh, is it another doppelganger? Almost assuredly. What? Come, come now. Whatever these they, they nonsense, do not what are here? Understand. What? A magical copy, uh, a fake, a disguise, something not real. For what purpose? That is the. If I had a magical fortunate. copy, surely it wouldn't be me standing here. It'd be. The copy. I see. Ah, All right. see, she oh. understands, she understands. You've caught me a wee bit off guard, I'll admit that, but... You sh what? surely sound like the fortunate. And, and she would, it, 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 for all intents that you can see, it, it does. if it's a disguise, it is a spectacular one, or uh, perhaps a well-made magical one, as the, like, the voice matches, the body matches, even her, her general mannerisms, though she seems to be somewhat, again, confused and a little bit off guard here. 
it all lines up. Shady. Right then. Trishik, so, uh, make me a perception check real quick at the Shady. doorway here. Is, she's really good. Well, it's fooled and inevitable. Why wouldn't that it be good? Is a 16 on the die, so I'm pretty sure that's a 40. So with a 40 is you're looking at her. Uh, that's a 41. 41. Something definitely does seem a little off. It doesn't look like she's wearing any kind of a disguise. Like, if someone was trying to replicate the Fortunate's appearance here, no amount of makeup or prosthetics could do it this perfectly. Uh, so, it, if it is not her, it is an incredibly well-made impersonation that would surely require either, again, power, somewhat powerful magic or a good impersonation, uh, or supernatural impersonation. Uh, but also would have to be someone that was at least mildly familiar uh, with her uh, and, and the, her situation, or perhaps situation of Koffler. You can't tell for sure with the 41 if it's a good impersonation or if she is just so uneasy with your appearance that she has been truly, <laughs> truly thrown off and surprised by you arriving here of all places. And her words just seem to corroborate that. Rapier rap is still held forward. Look, what are you hoping to accomplish here? You have done what you needed to for Kovler. You've helped out the council. The people are safe. Aren't you happy enough with that? Well, we're not too big on slaves. And since there appears to be a large group of slaves or people that the triad has kidnapped being held hostage... Our guess is somewhere down that hallway. We, we thought it would be a good idea to liberate them before we left. Look. I can't I, see anything. The room is lit. There's like, there's, there's continuous No, she lighting. meant down the hallway. Oh, yeah, you can't see like around the corner, but you can see much of the room here. Uh, look, I'll admit that Ember Beard's not one to let me be privy to every one of her plans and schemes. I can't tell you exactly her end goal, but I can tell you what she needs us for and what she's been after. Whatever you think you're doing here, I know you enough to know that you you must have some good hope driving you, whether it truly is just looking to see good people freed or whatever, save the people of Kovler, a city you don't even belong to. You're not going to make their lives better. If anything, if you proceed, if you push through here, you're guaranteeing the city's the ruin. Do you understand that? Well, I understand at 18 Forge Day is something's going to go down, but uh, I don't start to tackle it that's uh, entirely to do with you and the Scarlet Triad. Why don't you tell us about it? And R Rasheen's going to move into the room just so she can see the entire place to make sure there's no one hiding in the corners. Yeah, and she, well, you still got like 15 feet of space here. You're still a good 10 feet away from you to step right, through. She gonna she, yeah, she's not going to contest that or anything. No, she will absolutely <laughs> let you walk in the door. She's not going to lunge at you like a crazy person because you walked <laughs> in the doorway. You <laughs> triggered my trap. <laughs> no, nothing crazy happens or anything. Uh, but it does let you see a little bit more of the area. Uh, that you still can't see, like, it, it's conceivable people could obviously be behind the doors or still hidden around the full bend of this corner. The cell-shaped hallway does seem to go uh, at least 15 to 20 feet around the corner, and you can't really see what's immediately behind that wall. Um, but, Trishik, with your 41, although the fortunate, again, may just be very good at this, most people who are not exceptionally well-trained have tells for things like that. And you're certainly watching her face to glean any kind of information that you can. Uh, as you stepped into the room, without incredible like practice and focused determination, if she had people waiting, there would be some minor reaction, a shift of her weight, just a brief glance, even if just the eyes, just to ensure that plan wasn't blown. And she doesn't shifts, she doesn't look, she doesn't acknowledge that direction at all. You feel like either she is amazing at hiding it, or she truly does not have any support around this corner. Besides, there's not. They'd have to be, like, up against the wall. <laughs> Rapiers at their chest. So Cronking it. Really just... <laughs> so, using my new level 13 feet double speak, I'm actually going to... Uh, she would need to roll against my deception DC to understand what I'm saying, but she has to critically succeed to actually get the message. What's your deception DC? That should be 34. Okay. 
So she might know that I'm saying something, but she won't know what the message is unless she critically succeeds. Okay. And I'm going to reference back to Breach Hill. So remember a uh, councilman back in town and how uh, he had the, uh, what were those things called? In, anyways, was uh, not a good man. Well, it appears that uh, he's not a fake. And nodding towards her. And the story, obviously, to her would seem a little confusing what I'm saying. Kind of random. Yeah. But you guys know that's the real her. No summons or backup. All right. We want to lay all our cards on the table. Go all in. I'm starting where's the anti magic room? Anti magic room. That. It's gone. Most of the supplies that Amber Bridge wanted that she needed have already been moved out of the city. So you won't why, recover them here. So why forge your own signature? You could have just done it legitimately. <laughs> you can arrive here. You can somehow find this place. You can't put that together. Well, that was actually very easy to find. Look, it took us I've been a scapegoat for the council. For any strange problems that happened in Cobbler's had for as long as the Gambler's Guild's been allowed to exist. Hmm. Throwing suspicion upon myself. Making it perhaps a wee bit more obvious. <gasps> Oh, it's a triple thing. You've told me about these before. It's not like a, like it's a triple deception. Basically, she is a little upset, so lied to us to get us to clear her name when in truth she was problem. It's nothing, nothing personal, nothing against the group of you. No, I do not Look, blame you. It I'm here. For the same reason I imagine that you are. Because you want to see Kovlar covered in fire and everyone die? Because I want to prevent that, if at all possible, if that can even still be done. If there's anyone that can do it, it's Emberbeard and whoever it is she answers to. But, but she's the one who wants to do it. Look, I'm not going to pretend Emberbeard's come here out of some goodness of her heart because she cares about Kovlar. I'm still not convinced that's why the group of you have arrived. But she... I can't tell you where she's taking the anti-magic rune. Not because I'm trying to hide things still, but because I don't know. I know it's gone from Kovler. She sent that and the shard back to her boss. Back wherever that is. If you're hoping to find those to stop her plans for Kovler and Sav Sagarok, you're too late to even do that. So the only thing you can accomplish now is a massacre. You can kill us, fine. But Emberbeard already has what she wants. All you'll be doing is further prov provoking the Triad's ire. She has no reason to care or protect this city, but you could damn sure give her a reason to burn it to the ground. She's already going to burn it to the ground. That's the point. But the Triad is stretched so thin. Well, I know it's because we've reached out them to all. the Council of Kovler, to myself, to the Mountain Heart, to aid them as we can. You think if they don't have the power to undermine a city so isolated as Kovler? You think without all they have access to would be easy. They don't even have the manpower for that. You think they have it to dedicate to destroy a city for no reason, for no gain. You mean to keep the dragon from destroying the whole world by feeding him the city? What dragon? Oh boy. You know, for somebody who hoodwinks people for a living, you sure are gullible. I'm trying to get her pissed off at this point. She just looks confused. <laughs> So, I, I don't... hypothetical, what if situation was different than you were told? What if you were played like us? All right. Again, when I our cards down, feel free to enlighten me. What if there is a dragon that would like to eat the city? And if we do not intervene, it will. The whole city. What does that have to do with a the triad? They want it to. All right, let's back up a few steps. The purpose of the triad is to appease a world-shaking being that has been around for almost since the beginning of time. Her name is Strymalura. No. Uh, look, I'm starting to put together why you think you're doing good coming down here, but uh, it's not about this Strymalor or whatever dragon. It's not about one dragon. It's about the father of dragons. Yes, the Huck. 
We know. This is a step that we are trying to prevent. That's what Emberbeard and the Triad are trying to stop. You can't <laughs> reason with a god. At this point, Marshall just kind of breaks through in between Roisin and and true she yeah, just... but you could definitely it's a big double door you can like you can push it she's still in the room. doorway i've also wide as the door so that doesn't help <laughs> just <laughs> so I'm just, I, I just kind of sh like bully my way through and just walk up to her pick her if up you, if you walk up to grab her you're rolling initiative like, i don't care I'm, okay i'm done so as marshall goes to <laughs> marshall walk into the angry. room uh clearly hostile she takes a step back points a rapier your direction you would get through the doorway you'd get like adjacent to roshin uh, before she'd roll initiative. And as you walk up, uh, like one hand already out, clearly reaching for her, you hear a voice come out from the corner right next to you. I told you it was a waste of time to try. And I'm going to need you guys to roll me some initiative, my good friends. Is, is that hit slapper and fartist? Stop. Put us on some uh, combat so, music, my good Because man. I have plenty of them. It is time hmm. to start using them. Um, there you go. I do all the two. And I'm going to uh, look over like where that voice is. and It looks like it's on the screen, though, so it looks like it's already revealed. Perceive better to not roll a six on initiative. That's better. Doesn't matter. Don't worry, I rolled really low. Well, so. as, as I'm shoving through and going to reach Same. out for her, I'm like... Enough of, enough of this. Where is she? Alrighty. Start at the end of the table here with Resme. Uh, Resme is completely thrown off guard by the fact that Marshall just kind of slammed through the door. <laughs> and she got a 22. 23. Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Roisin. All right. So, Roisin, uh, you said it, it was 10 minutes. We took 10 minutes after the end of the golem fight. You would have time yeah, to yeah, refocus yeah. and whatnot, yeah. Well, I mean, it, okay. So, it was a refocus, but my heroism is gone. That's what I wanted to know. Because that's a ten minute spell. You I mean, you probably yeah, I okay. mean you you were in like super curse, weren't you? No. no oh no, you no. were just big and going ham. Oh I have I just had cast terrorism yeah. before the first fight's got a ten minute to Did you were you I didn't mm, stop to heal with see. medicine. You, I you stopped to heal with medicine. You've been talking for a bit. Yeah, you, you you would certainly not have still have the. Well, I, mean, I don't think we stopped to heal, but we did. No, talk. We, we, we used. I magic. refocused. Oh, you did refocus. Yeah, yeah. I was like, definitely it was, yeah, definitely gone. Okay. Uh, so in that case, uh, with Marshall scouting, I'm a twenty three as well. Who wants to go first? You. Probably me. Yeah. My toddler's in the corner. I rolled it too. <laughs> Red. Two. 25. Oh, I what's happening now? Oh, you guys so fast. are very not ready to fight I'm, this. Mraz is like trying to process everything that's happening. Oh, good. Marshall asked a question I wanted to ask. Good job, Marshall. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> good question, Marshall. <laughs> Trishik. 39. All right, and then tell us how the audio balances uh, chat, friends, with the sirenscape, the music, and whatnot, too. Because new setup, uh, tell us anything's too loud or if it's echoing through the microphones or, uh, or anything like that. I believe obviously that first... Roisin's microphone still sounds very quiet. Yeah, we can't. There's yeah. not a lot I can do about it right now. We'll try and fix it on break. Um, Marshall. 28. 28. I mean, he was already watching the entire thing. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy of man, man of action, so it makes sense. So, um, the fortunate here is I mean also not terribly fast so he's gonna get a 27 she's gonna be down in here big man scary yeah she's <laughs> not doesn't seem super excited to fight here such as life uh, but what did you get Trish? you got like a 39 yes you hear this voice emanate out from the corner next to Marshall and uh, something or someone clearly has been lurking there <coughs> waiting, it... and they are very much ready to go. But you are a very well-trained rogue with very quick reactions. Um, you can hear they're coming from right inside the door. They sound like they're within arm's reach of you, but you don't see anything. So. And here, I don't have a, a token. fortunate token. So I feel like it's fair at this point. I just give you the Scarlet Triad lady that I have. Yeah. <laughs> that works. If ever it was in doubt. I feel like what's well, all I have? It's a person. So can I see that particular square? Uh, yeah, the voice would have been coming out from the square adjacent to Marshall. So it'd be like back in the corner, tucked around the awning of the double door. Uh, so it'd be cover from you, but you could. Well, I just, if I can see it, then I can call it out. Right. Everyone heard it, though. So, so you, like, you it's, get the benefit of 
the calling. I let. Oh right, the, the, right. Out. You're right. Raz and Resme in the back probably don't know exactly where yeah. that came from. Everybody yeah, one action point out. That's a thing in second yes. edition. Yep. Because that hasn't I, come up hardly I've at all in this yet. Perceived. I technically, they're not hidden from me because I beat them in initiative, and I assume they rolled stealth. They did not roll stealth. Oh well, then they're not even hidden. Well, they're just whole ass invisible. Yeah. So <laughs> so I'll, I will call that out as one action. All right. So then everyone would be aware. I'll go ahead and uh, you do, do right next to Marshall, there is something. You still can't see it, but he points it out. Maybe and then two I will... Um, is it within my reach? Just yeah, again, it has cover, but like you can okay. reach... like Because Marshall's pushing the doorway, you can use the, the door frame and kind of swing in with your claws. Well, I was more concerned about being swung at. He could... Do the same, yeah, theoretically. So I will... <laughs> it's neutral cover, for sure. Yeah. I'll um, draw my bow and skirmish strike back five feet over at the fortunate. Okay. So you take a step back from the doorway and loose a shot from your bow. Four. She just has lesser cover because you have Roshin and Marshall in front of you. Yeah. 35. Uh, 35 will hit. So it's not sneak attack because I rolled perception for stealth. Okay. But it is a nice 13. All right. So you see this arrow sort of catch through her leather armor. She's she is relatively lightly armored. It pierces through with no real difficulty. Uh, grazing her shoulder, glancing a bit. And uh, did you have your bow in your hand or did you draw it? Drew it and then skirmish. Okay, so it is your turn. That's yes. what I was wondering. So for next to Marshall, a another dwarf appears, uh, so breaching from their invincibility. But this dwarf looks a fair bit different from Marshall, the citizens of Cobbler. He is kitted up in fairly heavy, spiked dark iron armor, uh, with a large and prominent symbol of Throskar hanging from his neck. His skin is pale, almost pallid, looking almost like a corpse prepared for ceremonies. And his hair, what little he has around the back of his head, a stark, bleached white. This is certainly a Dwerger. And as he appears, uh, right next to Marshall here, swinging already out wide around through using the openness of the room to his advantage, with a whip handle and a bit of it still coiled around one arm as he brings it in kind of short range to sort of lash at Marshall directly in front of him. Not raging yet, so you get real boy AC. Plus inspired defense. Plus inspired defense. That's true, he's been singing. Yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> I've been talking to... Wrong oh, tune. Tuning his loot in the background. You see you, Marshall, you go, E flat. Wonder Wall. <laughs> <laughs> so right. I don't remember if barbarians get it or not in second edition, but you can't be caught flat-footed by. Uh, he totally get it. Yeah. He advantage. definitely, absolutely has an advantage. Yeah, he is not flat-footed. Uh, well, actually, you definitely are supposed to be your level or lower. Yeah. Yeah, and I wasn't sure if it would matter. So either. he would catch you flat-footed because you guys are. We're 13 now. Yeah, we're 13. We left 12 is day. He still catches you flat footed. But wow. but we left the eternal wastes of 12 is day. And we're 13. Nice. We're, we get to do it. We got excited about it like three weeks ago. And now we actually <laughs> get to do it. <laughs> anyway, that is going to be... Uh, okay, good news. Not a fantastic roll. Um, it's only going to be a 49 against your flat footed. <laughs> I mean, that's a... That's definitely a crit. I mean, you can't super crit. Either, so. <laughs> what is he going to do? Double crit me? <laughs> <laughs> is it considered bludgeoning damage? It, uh, whips are definitely slashing. Slashing, okay. Uh, but it is a whip. He's going to roll these tiny little baby dice, so. <laughs> and his modifier is going to be like a plus 40 or something. <laughs> <laughs> so something. To, don't reveal all my secrets, sir. <laughs> something really dumb. So that's what happens when a problem comes along. But mm -hmm. as this whip uh, strikes and bites through your armor, the tip of this whip snaps with uh, an incredible concussive force, uh, a loud crack echoing through these enclosed chambers. And you can you can feel, and probably uh, Roshin and Trishik are close enough, can see the head of this snap and sear 
through Marshall's armor almost effortlessly, sizzling and almost burning away the little a little hole where it cracks. Huh. You're gonna take 21 points of mixed slashing and acid damage. Huh. Interesting. Do you have resistance three to slashing from me? Okay, so yeah. then uh, 18 then. Is it too physical? Physical. physical. I was oh. like, you might double dip it if you no, also get it for acid, just, but no, it's, it's physical. Okay, so the 18 no. total combined slashing and acid damage you would take. Good. My, That'll be uh, pretty great. Um, then this Dwerger is going to step around Marshall out in front of him, uh, not quite putting himself between you and the fortunate, right but here. moving uh, directly in front of you, moving more into the middle of the hallway. As he kind of grits his teeth and grins, I told you we should have just went right to the killing. And cracks the whip again at Marshall right in front of you as he repositions around. Jesus. Uh, that's going to be a oh, 29. Feast and famine on those rolls. Oh, 29 is a miss, yeah. 29, and that one, as he slides around, is going to crack off of your armor, searing across it with a little bit of a burn. Uh, but now it is your turn, Marshall. Ah, oh, that's sting quite a bit. But first off, my turn. Picks up Big Red, goes, Farmer, Old Slappy! And then it morphs into or Old Slappy to Halberd. All right. <laughs> And so, then, uh, and then I mean, as you oh. hit that and you're calling this out, a dwarger just growls, shut up, and whips at you again. Ooh, look at him with his attack of opportunity. Really? Okay. Attack of opportunity. It's a manipulator, right? Yep. This is why I stepped away, just in case. <laughs> Smart, because he's got reach on the whip. Could have got you in the door. Mm -hmm. Um. He's particularly angry about the three he rolled on his last attack and uh, seems to hate. Like, he's he's clearly just no, has no opposition to cold-blooded murder. But he seems to specifically hate Marshall. You're a dwarf. You grew up in the Dwarven Kingdoms. You're very aware of the extreme animosity <laughs> between your peoples here. I'm probably also the biggest dwarf he's seen. So. You're probably also the biggest dwarf he's ever seen. Just means he can murder you more. So that's going to be a 47. Jeez, man. That is another crit. I have <laughs> rolled 17 or higher or 3 or lower on this Jeez. dice so far. I mean, it's a crit. He's going to crack again. Manipulate is the one that gets interrupted. Yes. So as you go to shift it, mm -hmm. yes, he's going to crack it, hit your hand. It's going to interrupt it. It's going to kind of throw you off of the handle. And as your blade goes to morph, it kind of clinks and clacks and gets stuck in its form. Uh, you can definitely just do it again, but it's, he's going to eat that action. Okay. Uh, and I mean, or you can just hit him with an axe. Or you can just hit him with the axe. I was <laughs> just like, I just didn't expect that. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to rage. You're going to take uh, 2017 mixed points of slashing and acid after his... The good also, news is so the crits do not yeah, seem particularly dangerous. 17 after dangerous. this thing. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, crap, it's a crit. I totally did not multiply either of those. Double that. That would be 37, sorry. Thanks. I totally didn't do the crit multiplier on the first one. It's a whip. It's a whip. It's really annoying. It's been a minute. Uh, also, as he strikes you, uh, as you feel this whip biting at you, you are a pretty bold adventurer there, Marshall. There is very little that you fear. But somehow, his strikes, his uh, reactions, his, uh, his training, his general intimidating presence does actually frighten you a bit. You're frightened too. Don't I? Oh no! Wait, that's. I think I get resistance to you fright. Can, you can shake it off if you have the feet. I do. I have terrifying resistance. That's not that. No, oh, doesn't. Oh, no, that's not it. Terrifying yeah, resistance is you resistance. are terrifying, so you are resistant to things. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's scary. It's not resistance to. It's not terrified <sighs> resistance. Well. Okay, so he interrupted uh, the weapon change. So he that's still the first action. action. Yeah. So you can you can still do it, but you'd have to do it as your second action. And, uh, I still need to rage too. Um, well, I'm going to rage, and then I'm just going to smack him with Big Red. <laughs> the axe the... works fine as an axe. Yep. It, it still works fine as an axe. <laughs> he's scared, and he's angry now. <laughs> Generally a bad co uh, combination for the people directly in front of him. Oh, you made a mistake. It's a 10. Um, for level 13, a 10's not bad. 
It's your first attack, we, too. We have huge modifiers now. <laughs> it's a minus one, so that would be... Eh, 35? Uh, 35. Is that with a minus two for Frightened? Oh, it's minus two, so... Yeah, you're Frightened, too. Uh, 34, as you swing it, he cracks this, and he's not terribly quick, this Dwerger, but he sees the axe coming down and adjusts himself and just sort of shoulders through the blow, glancing out this side. 34 is not going to hit him. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Now... In the back here, you have uh, the fortunate, who does not want anything to do with this. <laughs> this is not what she wanted today. Uh, she is going to take another step back, kind of cautiously, seemingly a little bit worried about the you in general. I mean, more than most people, she is fairly aware of what you can do. <laughs> He knows how capable you are. I'm grabbing something real fair. Let me let me core rule book real fast, like. I thought you were at three villain points right now. Yeah. yeah. Another one? Yeah, yeah. I should be at one. I spent one on that attack, so. Yeah, you oh, spent yeah. at least one. Oh, so nice. now I'm at I thought two. you were at three at the start of the session. Go, no, I was at two at the start okay. of the session. Going back up with another one from Link 1429. She's she exists gonna, to feed our suffering. She's going to uh, still rape your back, pull a hand in kind of close to her chest. <sighs> A form thoresis, and cast a spell out towards Roshi, and as Ms. Dwerger seems to be tangling with Marshall decently well. Uh, I need divine to... Aegis. Okay. Uh, is it a divine spell she's casting? No. Good, I get plus one. <laughs> uh, arcanum rejectum, arcane countermeasure. Remind me what that does. It's at its minimum level. I know it reduces the level. Um, It's going to give her a plus two status bonus oh, so to everything. Heck my divine ages then. <laughs> this is better. Plus two is that as bonus. Make me a will save. No, if only it was an auditory effect. Uh, let's see, that's a 14 on the It die. is not an auditory effect. <laughs> we have Everyone three reactions go off. <laughs> Don't worry, I get to get in there Aww, too. Aw, Link 1429, he's at three now. <laughs> he drops another one in. You're a jerk. Good. Don't worry, I'm getting in on this fiasco as well. 39. You just did like a billion. And 39 is, I think we're pretty solidly I succeed, at. I critically succeed. It's at like a billion. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be fine. You're not really sure what she cares, but it has literally no effect on you whatsoever. She's going to um, take a D6. From what? Bleed. I oh, shot, shot her. her with a wounding oh, gun. you shot her, right. <laughs> I was like, what? Five. Uh, what's, there's a bleed. There's a bleed. bleed. And she That's gets all she's got. To roll a D20. All right, Rez. Um. Oh, Raz she's still bleeding. Is, I keep meaning to look up the difficulty by level chart so I know what this is while I'm asking, but I'm gonna lingering performance. I have it on my GM screen. This the the, the Paizo so like what's the, what's GM the screen is fantastic. It's 13, 31. 31. Hey. Um, it's one uh, 15. There's no way you don't make it. There's no plus way you don't make it with a 15. Yeah, like get yeah, stop. Well, it matters if it's a crit. So it's, it's, it's not quite a crit, it's not yeah. Quite quiet, but that means it lasts for long enough for me not to worry about it for a little bit. Three rounds. Um, and then the second, in the middle of his strumming, he's going to look at the Dwarger. Hey, 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 I just remembered a funny joke. Why'd the pony have a hard time talking? What? Because he's, <laughs> he's, he's a little horse. I'm going to cast Hideous after on him. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, it works. Make him laugh. I, I can't Make argue with laugh. that one. All right. Um, Roshin, before I roll this, give me a hero point for the thin crust lovers slash likers of the world since everyone likes thin crust, so I default to the lowest amount of hero points. What? I'm not sure. Sam Fox Tanya gives you a hero point, though. I mean, well, it's a um, constellation. I also like thin crust, so. Yeah, well, he, he asked specifically if anyone at the table liked thin crust, but pretty much uh, all of us will eat thin crust. Like, none of us you, are. I will eat whatever is put in front of me. I love thin crust. It's yeah. categorically worse than so regular, but. the default but... answer from there was lowest hero point count. Anyway. Um, so make me a good old fashion wheel save. Wheel save. Won't save. He has nothing fancy for this. 30. Oh, uh, well, a 30 right. mm. fails, Ooh. so he slowed one and can't use your actions for as long as it sustained the spell. <gasps> Thank you. Dokey. And he has attack of opportunity. Oh my god, that was such money. <laughs> Value. Oh, he seems to find that horrible joke very hilarious. <laughs> and as he just starts kind of losing himself into laughter, he, his assault relents here. And you have one action left, I believe. That's, that's all three. Oh, you're continuing your performance. Rasheen. 
You too are in the room. I too am in the room. As I've been kind of watching this whole thing happen for, before my eyes. And you heard one of the best jokes you've heard all day. <laughs> well, the Dwergers seem to think so. <laughs> um, Roshin's going to uh, lock eyes with the Fortunate and... Uh, your Excellency, why don't you sit this one out? We can continue our discussion later. Um, that'll be an intimidate. All right. Uh, and if I can, if I can physically menace her while I do that, then she's, I think she's already, already physically <laughs> menaced. Like, I don't think that's a concern. Uh, let's see. What is that? Eleven. That's an eleven. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so that's gonna be uh, thirty-six. Yeah, we'll call her a little intimidated. Perfect. And, uh, definitely uh, gonna have some frightened. That's one action. The other action is I'm just gonna stride around to the other side of the Dwerger here. Um, because he's out of reactions. Yeah. And she doesn't have AOL, so. Uh, and then I'm gonna stick him with Flick. <laughs> he's just laughing. I get it. Because <laughs> it's a pony. <laughs> <laughs> I cast Flick him stickers. Can you read that for me, please? I might have to rearrange where the ten. dice trays are. We'll figure okay, it out. So that's gonna be. Uh, and my curse is here. Oracle math. Yeah, give me a second. So While that's... you're taking that second, Resme, because Resme is the Res Bay, and Resme no. needs to have, at the very least, three points. Wow. There you go. <laughs> well done. Ice cold ice cube. We're getting some support. We're getting loaded now. How cold is it? Ice, ice cold. cold. My ice melted. So that's uh, only a 35 with his flat footed. Uh, 35 will hit his flat footed. Ooh, cool. Some, some dice. Right I mean, 35 there. to hit his flat footed. I'd have some concerns. Should I bother to roll the d6 fire damage? Um, yeah, Dwerger doesn't have any like fire immunity or resistance. I'm so unused to this. See, real dwarves have fire resistance. Hey, it's not my fault <laughs> that you're using a fire weapon in Age of Ashes. I just gave it to you. You didn't have to use it. <laughs> 16. It's called Age of Ashes, Nick. 22 uh, okay. slashing and uh, fire damage. It is nice when you get to do the thing, though. Resume, the bottom of the round. Uh, Resume gets a, a mischievous look on her face and goes, Mechanicum reinventum. And uh, I'm going to cast Animate Rope on his whip, and I'm going to tell it to coil. You're definitely not animating a rope, a wielded whip. A whip? You can't. <laughs> a it's wielded a whip? It doesn't matter. Yeah, it can be wielded. It actually says it does not have to be unattended. Well, let it doesn't see. specifically say it has to I'm it sure be it does not say that specifically, but let me see what it does say. If it Book does, does, that's a real that's, good meme. <laughs> that's a solid meme. I'm just almost positive that a wielded whip does I mean, not... there's no way a whip doesn't classify as a whip. As it a definitely whip. Like a whip-like object. That's it, not a core rulebook spell. Where'd that come so, from? Animate rope isn't a core rulebook spell? Here, the reason why I think it works is because it specifies attended, unattended Unless elsewhere in the that. spell. Okay, animate rope. Let's see. Into 100 feet. A rope or non-living rope-like object. Non-living, that, that is a non-living rope. And if you look at the bottom, it actually <laughs> specifies attended, unattended in part of it. So it doesn't matter if it's attended in most of it, unless I'm trying to do something well, specific. Well, that's, that's it tying itself to a willing creature or an unattended object. That's not about the thing being unattended. But it doesn't say unattended. It just says this, an object. Yeah, this is... I am... It's advanced player's guide, by the way. Um, there is no... A fortitude save. I'll give him a fortitude save because it's wielded, so it gets his his saving throws. Actually, it's reflex. Does it say? It doesn't specify a save. Well, it depends what I ask it. Well, because it's do. like it's trans. It's a, like it's a transmutation spell, but like you're casting it on the whip that he is holding. So like to transmutate a wielded weapon, I would say is a fortitude save from the wielder, and if that fails, then whatever the spell says. So what is your spell DC? Uh, my spell DC is going to be a 32. I'll say if he succeeds, what level spell is that? It is a uh, level one because it's... If one. he succeeds, absolutely nothing happens. <laughs> it's definitely uh, what's going there. It's my favorite level one spell. Uh, in the game. He's going to get a 35. So you try okay. and take a hold of it, but as he's, he's got this in his hand. You see it kind of worm a little bit, but his just like brute force is, is going to kind of literally force it through that. Your little level one wiggle magic isn't going to overcome oh, the fact that he's whipping with it. That was the best meme ever. <laughs> I was kind of hoping he failed, however unlikely it was. 
she'll look really grumpy all of a sudden and she'll go flame <laughs> and that's a one action produce flame and Dang she'll it. fling it at him all right make me attack girl <laughs> you know fun that's a seven uh, that is a seven. Uh, that's going to be a uh, 29. Yeah, it's definitely not going to hit. Okay. Uh, but you just, you just kind of bored, just like, me. <laughs> 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 the fireball just kind of <laughs> over the fight. Trishik. <laughs> well, does the fortunate look like she wants to leave or that she's still participating? She's still participating. She backed up, but she's definitely still participating. I mean, she just tried to cast a spell on her shame, like, immediately. Yeah, I, um, I suppose I will, uh, go up to her. Okay. You can push past Marshall in the doorway here and make your way up to the fortunate. Is, is there... Okay. Guess our map's frozen, so we'll theater the mind it. I don't know why everything's broken. Uh, oh, yeah. continue. Okay, so I will, uh, go up... Can you up. not see the map? Uh, it was frozen. So I'll, I'll go up to the fortunate. Uh, bow in one hand, claws in the other, no arrow currently drawn. And I'll go for a thrust at her face and faint down and go for the gut. Okay. Give me your deception. Hell, why not? I'll just uh, re-roll that because I have hero points. I must spend you, them on every do? roll. I'm going to go even lower. And I'm going <laughs> Super to go for low. the face, go for the gut, and then faint down and go for the ankles. Oh, also it's your, your magical seven foot spot tall right there. lizard is. She's like a four foot seven. It's my secret weapon. <laughs> I, I'm going to steal I'm, her I'm ankles. I'm crouching on the ground going for her ankles because of the size difference. Like, I am <laughs> significantly taller than her. Like, down on all fours. <laughs> I have nimble crawl. <laughs> Use lizard. Hey. That's my So, that is a 12 which is much better than a four and i have to go over and look because i don't remember i believe it's a 25. i'm sure you succeed so 37. you, you succeed yeah so you're successfully fainting and then going down to steal her ankles get a swing at her flat footed well, let's steal some ankles it's chic the freaking ankle bandit To another four, but uh, that's still a 30. 30 hits here, flat footed. So I'm gonna roll this. She's not like a warrior. I'm gonna roll this handful of dice and we're gonna see what happens. This is a game, not a warrior. Ooh. This is a bad Six, bet. 10, 19, uh, 27. 27. Okay. And that'll be my full turn. A faint, a move, and an attack. And uh, as you strike at her, this Dwerger here, seeing everyone just kind of move past him as he's laughing, is still just like losing his mind at the tiny pony joke. (laughs) 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 It's not not that funny! (laughs) And he puts his shoulder down and goes to shove Marshall back (laughs) into the previous room. (laughs) So uh, That's funny. Versus your fortitude, DC. Do you really want to know? Sure. What's your fortitude, GC? So it's 10 plus my fortitude, 10 right? plus your fortitude. 36. Yep. 36. You, you still get the plus one from the five defense. Oh, I'm sorry. 37. Okay. Um, dang it. You only got a 47. Uh, so he'll critically succeed. <laughs> Holy 47. I'm like, uh, you. you are a huge dwarf, and he is not a, he's like a bulky but not massive dwerger, so he's kind of got this lower center. He mm-hmm. puts his shoulder into you and almost picks you up and, like, flings you back into the room, back to right in front of Resme, which he will follow Attack before... Sorry. No, it's, that's just he comes with you. Oh, okay. Before he... Uh, hmm. He's slowed. He's just gonna slap you. Pushes you back and just slaps as he comes in, still losing his mind with laughter over the tiny horse. So, Funniest thing he's ever heard in his life. So the shuffle move was one action thing? That's how the shove works. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah, when you shove someone, you okay, can I've been doing to it. follow them the distance they you don't have to. Yeah, you can oh, eat okay. them or you can go with them. Okay, it's, I thought I was doing works. it wrong the, the entire time because I was like, what? No, it's, you get to choose. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, it's like full rushing. You, you succeeded, okay. you get to choose how the outcome is. So this is his of. second attack. Uh, but he's going to. 
try really hard to just fight through just how funny that image of the tiny horse is. <laughs> because it's really freaking funny. But he hates you more than he wants to laugh at the little horse. <laughs> does he though? He does, yeah. Okay, so... Math is really hard for me. <laughs> 43. I'm having a tough time with numbers today. That's another correct. He's got really hard to add numbers. None of them are nice and round. Uh, so as he strikes you once again, the acid of this whip still just effortlessly biting through your armor uh, as he goes and continues his assaults. Remembering to double this time, because that's how crits work. 44. So 41 points of mixed slashing and acid damage but he only gets those two actions because he's slowed one because that tiny horse is just too freaking hilarious and it's your turn marshall oh man sorry math no i, I freaking feel you on math in this one why like i hate how dare i can't I have, add to this how dare my brain I have is so big, tiny okay so i'm down to frighten one right uh you're down to frighten one. Oh, um there wasn't the crows attack opportunity okay. you are frightened one right now uh, which you would take it and that would have it does, actually never mind, it doesn't matter, you only find one. Go ahead. Okay, I'm just making sure. Yeah, you're still frightened one right now. Okay. Well, let's see here. There's so many floating numbers in this one. It's almost like we haven't played Pathfinder at a high level for a month. <laughs> I'm just going to sidestep like so. Yeah, you just and walk around him, he doesn't have any reactions, he's laughing too hard. Just reaching the point. <sighs> I'm really tired of this. <sighs> I'm going to go large into Big Marshall. So much easier to do in Arkin Forge. So as he gets real big next to you, move over, get huge, smack a guy. Smack a guy better. Use your big boy force. Even if he's like frightened or whatever, I'm like, you know what? I'm not taking that risk. I rolled a 10 again. It's divine providence at this point. Apparently. <laughs> Tarag ordained it. Uh, so it's only minus one. So that's going to be... Yeah, minus one from right end. Yeah. 35. He's just slowed. He doesn't have any other... He slowed. He can't take Greg. There's no other penalties on him. 35. You're going to catch him. It's not... But it's just kind of a glancing blow. It's not going to do meaningful. Just misses. I'm changing guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the fortunate in the back here is now very unhappy with the situation that has been presented to her and she is going to reach back behind her as Trishik and Rishi and kind of bear down uh, back behind her belt and pull out an object that you have seen way too many of a pair of scarlet triad insignia stamped manacles and as she as you go down low Trishik she kind of thrusts down with your rapier with one hand, just poking down at one of your arms, swinging at you with the other with the manacles, the clamps open, uh, and is actually going to attempt to snap them down onto your wrist. It's going to be a bit of a scuffle. This is all three of her actions. But it's going to resolve functionally as an attack. So I can nimble dodge it? You can nimble dodge it. Okay. It is, it, I mean, we could absolutely nimble dodge. It's trying to slap manacles on you. I wasn't sure if it was based on my saves or based on my age. No, yeah, I had to look at it too. It is actually, every, I think every single Scarlet Triad Grunt you fought has had this ability and it's never actually come up before. Because they tried it once. They did try it they one time, it right, once. in the Hamlet. They tried it that they one time. They got them on someone's arms. But. Buddy. Yep. Oh, you think they didn't actually yeah. Buddy? But Buddy just didn't care because he had a. You can't do manipulate actions. Okay. As you go to nimble, <laughs> as you go to nimble dodge down on the floor, she is going to pivot, almost dropping down to a knee with you, to kind of follow just and readjust. You guys are just wrestling on the floor, and Rasheen's like, "Can you not, please?" <laughs> For natural twenty, on the hero point. Uh, and as she comes back up and you kind of reset, Trishik, you find that your wrists are clamped together. Uh, it's going to be a penalty on attacks. You can't easily do manipulate an actions. You're not going to be able to do two-handed things like firing your bow. You are manacled. But that is her entire turn. It's this bit of a scuffle that 
it's funny that you can't do anything about <laughs> Rass. Um, so the funny thing is, like, I could theoretically get, is it get the attack trait? Yes. I could get down Mr. President. You could throw <laughs> your own wrist in the way! Try to, like, medical stick us with my arm in the way, and I put my arm in the way. I can't think of a more effective way to prevent this! <laughs> <laughs> She'd just be so confused. <laughs> She'd be like, what? Rest. <laughs> I literally can't think of a better way to stop this. <laughs> Take me instead. <laughs> um, how tall is the is the room? It's about ten foot ceilings. Ten foot ceilings. It's pretty deep underground, so it's it's standard uh, standard chamber. They're not terribly low. Raz. Um, has bad experience with the dwarves seeing that he can cast magic and coming straight for him. <laughs> He's going to turn around, look back behind him. Remembered, Mr. Dwarger. Tiny horse. And he He's going to run back to the wall and then climb up the wall. All right. So he, you, you fall back far enough to be a little, you don't need to move the map. Uh, be functionally a little, but you can take the token like off the top. Uh, up on the wall as his laughing just redoubles. <laughs> is this just again like he's been reminded of the funniest inside joke he's ever heard in his life? Just that tiny freaking horse, man. It's a good joke. <laughs> Rosine. <laughs> so you're now here, your ally is handcuffed. Oh, they made you an honorary member, did they? <sighs> I told you. We could have talked, if not for your insane dwarf friend, oh. but I oh. suppose I know that pain. <laughs> gesturing to the dwerger that is currently brawling with him. Oh, don't worry. We can still talk. Uh, we'll talk later. Uh, and Gal Kovica and uh, a golden duplicate of uh, Roshin is going to pour out of her and uh, crouch protectively over Trushik. Now uh, that's guardian. Uh, that's a, uh, what do they call it? Spiritual guardian. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Roshin is going to one, two, three, four, stride around uh, Mr. Druger and stand in front of him between resume and him. Fair enough. Just leave her with a handcuffed lizard in the corner. My, don't worry. Guardian of all, all the people, you guys will be, be fine. <laughs> I think I'm the same. You know it's like so the rogue got handcuffed. The one who broke us out of jail. <laughs> the one who stuck in the jail. Probably... It's harder to do in the middle of a fight. Okay, <laughs> resume. It's not. At all. <laughs> There's no penalty. <laughs> What's well, the penalty of a failure chance on getting your lock picks? You have to get your lock picks out of your bag, which has a failure chance. You have to try to pick it, which has a failure chance. You have he, to successfully pick it. He also has a tail. Also, I, there's slap a, her with your tail. There you there's, go. There's Resume. a feat that lets you grab things with your tail, so I don't have it. Oh. Axilla! Uh, and Marshall's form will become blurry. Oh, and not that again! Um, but you will sense yourself being, uh, you feel warm. Um, and uh, then Resme is going to uh, back up uh, by Raz, because she does not like being anywhere near this thing. Fair enough. And he no. can't hit you because he's still laughing. That's Truth right. Seek. <laughs> such money. I love it. It's a very yeah. good place, sir. My favorite second level spell. Animate rope is the best. Fun fact, that's also what she cast on her machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. It was also hideous laughter. Anyway. She was very funny. No, he didn't think it was very funny at all. Did you think was a good idea? <laughs> 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 I'm going to grab my skeleton key out of my concealed sheath. Right, make me a flat check. Hey. 17. 17. Okay. And I'm going to, as a free action, cast knock while attempting to unlock the manacles. Okay, make me a flat check. Open up the door, it's real. Yeah, nat 20. That's a natural okay. 20. <laughs> and then you're gonna try to open the manacles because the free action is casting knock. Yeah, that's part of unlocking. Okay, so that's your flat check. Then make me your thievery check. Plus 30. <laughs> so 46. <laughs> you just, in like three you seconds, thing. <laughs> thing up and how much like, are you bloody serious? <laughs> we broke out of prison because I unlocked all the dolls in about 10 seconds. This was not a good idea. 
and I'm going Dumb. to just cut her in the face with my claw. <laughs> <laughs> you stop this now. <laughs> Quit. <laughs> so uh, that is only a th- 29. 29's, three. 29's not going to hit her. Doesn't matter. You rolled what yeah, matters. The point is, I rolled you have a certain dominance over. Just hold on. Uh, give me one second. Here. So <laughs> the Dwerger here, seeing your wizard friends kind of retreat, and seeing Rasheen run up, is going to step back through the door, still laughing about the tiny horse, <laughs> and whip out, uh, lash out with the whip towards Marshall as he retreats. Hitting you. Well, I mean, he's angry at me. Uh, Roll that he flasher. doesn't like dwarves. They're what? not friends, these two uh, groups of people. These civilizations, they don't get along terribly well. You gotta roll that flat check. Uh, flat check for the blurra. It's gonna be a 12, so that's gonna work. And then the attack roll. I'm gonna scoot the token. Not. Oh. Up, up on my phone. No, the icon. He took um, a step away from me. Gonna be a just a thirty-three to hit you, actually. This, this dude only knows how to roll nineteen or two. He beats it by one. So he's yeah. not gonna crit you. He's not gonna crit. Yeah, I included that. But it's I'm gonna, also big now. It's gonna snap. The whip snaps at you as you retreat. For twenty-five, so twenty-two points of mixed slashing and acid damage. Okay, that's not as bad. And that's all he's got, because he's slowed one. Marshall, <laughs> dang it. This stupid thing won't stay in my, we my enemy frame. No, that is that is the nuclear <laughs> option, sir. You don't need to spray Gorilla Glue, this tiny piece of paper, this plastic frame. We Marshall. Am, though. <laughs> oh, I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> Old Slappy. Old Slappy. The form of a giant paddle. <laughs> And then I'm going to curve it sideways and hook it to where I sweep under his leg. Going to try. Okay. So it's a key stop now. What is up with me and rolling tens today? That is you got the bone number. You have reached consistency. Apparently. You have achieved nirvana. Uh, <laughs> slightly below average nirvana. 34? Sounds like nirvana to me. Hey, good news is reflex save is freaking terrible. 34 is absolutely going to knock yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And Not then, a fast man. This as way. he's gonna do the whole sweep with the halberd, and then overhead, straight x way down. Oh, I got memories of Dalren just then. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Aren't you proud? I remember oh, Dalren. No, it's, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. Uh, so that's minus five. Yep, minus so five. Ten. <laughs> so it's ten. <laughs> <laughs> there are words I would like to speak to you, but this is a family-friendly channel, so I'm going to behave. <laughs> I'm but that's still going to be a whopping 36. And uh, flat-footed. 36? Well, yeah, flat-footed 36. That'll definitely Aha! happen. All right, so, it. so it's old slappy. So old. You have assurance on attack rolls. <laughs> <laughs> you don't dangerous. want that. That's bad. <laughs> no, you should never take that. It's working out here. So that's a three, and I think that's a 10. So that's, that's a 10. Yep. Uh, here, so that's, I got it. Oh, so that is... Math. 30... Yeah, just plain 30, I believe. Pretty good. Whap. Whap. Slap. All right, so back in lizard land, where she no longer has a handcuffed lizard, she just has a regular lizard. He was handcuffed for all of four seconds. It literally took her longer to apply the manacles than it took you to get out of them. (laughs) (laughs) There's three actions to put them on, two actions to take them off. One action to take them off. Yeah, you had to get your thing You had to pull the key out with the other. Yeah. Yeah. But the whole un- like unlocking was whole one action. Yeah. She went rogue. <laughs> so she's... What do you do? What do you do but swing for the fences? Uh, she at this could point, sit she's, down and cry. She's, she's, <laughs> she can stop fighting. That is an option she has. She has limited other choices that she sees oh, yeah, at the moment. Oh, yeah, she would have taken a D6. Oh, yeah, she would have taken a D6, which does well, not stop. Six. Value bleed. A five um, and a six. She's going to flick the rapier uh, towards one side, and then similar to exactly what you did, we have like a freaking Pirates of the Caribbean fight here, just faints <laughs> back and forth, uh, whip it to the other, and attempts to faint against you. Against perception? Against perception, yep. 33. She's going to get a 30, 35. She's going to get 38. Mm-hmm. So, so she, is, she is the 
and Freaking I will nimble dodge. leader of the gambler's guild. <laughs> she's, yeah, yeah, she's got right. deception pretty down. This is an interesting little mirror fight we have here. And then, yeah, you nimble dodge her fight, so it's... Her attack, so it's functionally a wash. Plus two, minus two for the flat-footed. Functionally a wash, except that you are flat-footed, oh. which rogue things. But I also yeah, right have now. 34 AC. You do have a 34 AC. It's very... Um, Everyone's very proud of you, Chishik. You've done a good job. She is going to get a 36. I'll tell you. I was factoring in that. It's 33 base. Huh. It saved my butt. Not she at all. gets to roll. <laughs> it's a rogue action. time, my friend. <laughs> good thing I have all of these d6s over here. Um, so she is going to catch you. For a, I love the sound of a jillion d6s in the morning. It's very satisfying. It is a, just a really satisfying noise. I don't know if it picks up on the microphone at all, but it's a jillion sneak attack dice. It just feels good. Feels and then good in my all hands. Ones and you feel really. It was the, actually about the most average roll I've ever seen in my life. I'm gonna guess 34. Um, it's going to be 27. Okay. So you'll take 17, because Roshin's uh, image is going to knock away part of it. I'll take 14, because of minus 3. There you go. And as she uh, as she strikes and lands this, uh, it's more of like an unbalancing strike than it is a direct blow. You are just straight up flat-footed now. Mm -hmm. um, and then she is going to attack again. She's literally just you, <laughs> but not as cool. <laughs> Almost a little, little magic. All, almost exactly what she's got. She's well, gonna... she has the thing that I'm taking next level, so. Is it called precise debilitations? Yes. Okay, yeah, she does have that. <laughs> That's exactly what she has. She is also a thief rogue. She's also a thief rogue. Swing again. You are flat-footed now. She's at a minus five. It's a, and Raper's actually not agile, so mm -hmm. full minus five. You trade the bigger damage dice for losing agile. They're kind of heavy, actually, if you're held a rapier. You know you want to. It's only gonna that. be a thirty-one on your flat-footed, so That's not, gonna not hit. going to land that follow-up strike because of this. Uh, ah, Rez is here to lethal. carry the party on his tiny rat-like shoulders, really and really it is, is now his turn to show us some more of his wondrous exploits. Tiny horse. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is it so funny? <laughs> it's like I kind of look at. Anyone who's, if anyone looks like. Why is that so funny? He's literally on the ground now, like open pump, slapping the cell with one hand as he I tries to. I just kind of look at Roshin. Remind me not to let him tell me jokes. <laughs> I, I mean, I got it. It was pretty, it was pretty good. It was a pretty good one. No, it's just not that funny. Maybe it's a um, delivery. I don't get it. <laughs> you, you don't understand. It's, it just, in the way he said it, it's just perfect. It's coming from a rat. <laughs> like, Rez is in the middle Rez of casting a spell. He's doing he was doing hand motions that most people recognize as soothing. He's starting to hum a dwarven song, and all of a sudden he just kind of looks up, coming out of projectiles. Immediately changes it to coming out of projectiles. I was gonna do this, um, but because you're that guy. <sighs> The 18 oh, on the die plus a 22, so a 40 total. Flat footed. It's definitely going to hit, but not going to crit him, even prone. You need one more of those. Does prone actually still make you more resistant to ranged attacks in this game? It didn't first edition. No, it was. It's just, it's, just, it's just flat footed now, right? Yeah. It's just bad. In first edition, it made you more resilient to ranged attacks. That's a lot of. Um, I imagine he throws a lot of telekinetic projectile at this point. Five, ten, Heightened 16, cantrips are a hell of a 20, drug. 20, 24, 25, 26, plus anything else? Spell cast modifier. Okay, so plus five, five probably. Pro probably five. So 31? 31. Yeah. Whap. One. Oh, <laughs> ow, ow, stop. As, <laughs> as he just grabs. I said it was funny! <laughs> as the tip of the whip and just hits him with it. <laughs> like, really hard, though. Like, it probably cracks. <laughs> Does it have acid? Does he have armor? <laughs> uh, the old, can I telekinetically projectile a bomb for extra damage? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Run, Darn. Um, she'll focus, uh, keep him safe. Um, and the, the uh, 
image is going to continue to crouch over True Sheik. Um, actually, changed my mind. Uh, it's going to flit and flicker uh, and uh, appear on the opposite side of the fortunate, flanking her. Okay. Because I can do that. Um, and part of that action is it can take a swing. Oh, that's neat. Fully the fortunate. Let me teach you how to swing it. Seven. It's a melee spell attack. Uh, 29 versus her flat foot. 29 is just barely not going to catch her flat foot. She it's, just steps out of the way. It's fine because oh, Trushik yeah. is flanking now. And she takes another d6. Four. Man, she stopped bleeding. Hey, that's let me fix that you. real quick. <laughs> <laughs> or until you hit her again. Uh, uh, and then Roshi. Is that sustaining a spell that does that? That's sustaining a spell. Neat. Every time I sustain it, it, I can move it and it can swing, or I can move it and it can guard somebody. Cool. Uh, and then I'm going to step forward uh, to stand over the. Um, actually, where's Marshall? Marshall acts after him. No, I'm going to just step forward uh, to. Try to keep him on that side of the door, and uh, then I'm going to uh, take a swing down at him while he's prone on the floor. Well, still losing his mind laughing. He's still losing his mind laughing. <laughs> Funniest thing he's ever heard in his life, man. Uh, that's a two on the die. It's a tiny really horse. Like that. uh, that's not nice. She's going to kind of try to regrip herself because she's busy swinging in the motion of the Morning Star that the, uh, the spiritual guardian's holding. Did you say 20? I didn't. Oh, it's an 11. From a 2 good. to a 20 would be real a 2 nice. to 11 is also a large it's improvement. It's also really good, but I already swung, so it's probably not going to be that great. Well, so. that actually takes your multiple attack penalty for the Guardian Swing. Right, but it's oh. more, it, it's not a bad... Yeah, it counts as a melee spell attack. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, okay, uh, fair enough. It's also good because it makes my curse happy, so I like that too. Also true. Um, I like it when my curse is happy. I like when my curse is happy, because <laughs> my curse isn't happy, I'm sad. <laughs> so are we. So... Uh, that's going to be uh, 23 plus uh, 29 versus his flat foot. I don't think it's going to do Definitely that. not going to hit him. No, it's just going to... He is much more heavily armored, uh, covered in pretty hefty slats of scale mail covering most of his body, and your sword is just going to kind of glance into it harmlessly. He's a little tank. Resme. Uh, Resme is going to say, Raz, that was an excellent idea. I think I'll follow through as well. Huh. Uh, project him in Vatorum. Uh, okay. Telekinetic projectile uh, with true strike. Okay. <laughs> Three action cool. big yeet. I think they call this in the musical like an ensemble or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Three action big yeet. Uh, so Ghost of Azan, gonna put a hero point right back to Roshin for supporting the rogue. We love to see the team effort. So you will 2d20 take highest. That's a 19. That's probably the highest, I would assume, unless the other one's a 20. Uh, that's going to be a 41. I right, mean, 41 is definitely going to hit him, yeah. Even throw, like, he's got flat footer, but he's got lesser cover. I mean, you, you definitely hit him. I'm pretty sure we're all in, like, credit on 20s territory, even when he's prone. His AC is pretty okay. Beefy. He a beefy boy. Four. The sound of the raw meat of a jillion big metal Norse foundry dice falling down the tower. Uh, that's going to be a 31 points of slapping damage. Alrighty. A six, a four, a six, a four, and then a pile of twos. Yeah. Oh, I like the sound that makes on his armor, don't you? You would kind of <laughs> see it just raining around Rishi and clattering across his armor. <laughs> Three actions, the nuka guy. Pretty good. Trishik. Well, I'm going to roll an intimidation check on the fortunate. Okay. You, you're probably going to succeed, but go for yeah. it. I wouldn't say she is open to intimidation right about now. And um, I'm going to say right before I lunge at her, Damne Lodoshki. 15. There we go. This is flanked, right? That's a 15 for the intimidate. Oh, the intimidate. So, so what's your total? Or no, 13, uh, I'm sorry, 13, 32. Yeah, she's, uh, this is a little unsettled by this weird magic that's happening around yeah, her, and she doesn't... Status penalty. Can't and not really mirror. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Slap her. They're minus three on the AC. Love to see it. And uh, then we're going to steal her ankles. <laughs> <laughs> Probably still steals her ankles, honestly. Um, that is a 30. 30 does, in fact... Still steal her ankles. Ankles wow. stolen. Nicely done. Sneak attack. God, you'd love to see it. Six, seven, eight, ten, sixteen, twenty-four. Okay. And then uh, continuing into that with a second attempt to steal her ankles. 
She already stole her ankles. So I guess she has <laughs> now. No, they're mine now. He stole <laughs> stole the shins now. Yeah. Uh, He's yes. up the legs. You <laughs> stole my lungs. <laughs> Malachite is here to stay. <laughs> Lieutenant Fortune, you got no legs. Is that funny? <laughs> yep, I need a fortitude <laughs> save. Okie dokie. I, I need a fortitude save. Okie dokie. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. Well, I'm probably not going to roll up at her net. Uh, let me get you with the 29. She has slowed one. For one round, right? For or, one round. For one round. The Which brawling I'm not really sure why that's just not just stunned one. There's probably a mechanical difference somewhere. Oh, you can't use reactions if you're stunned. Yep, it's much worse. Also stunned it takes effect immediately if it's your turn. And then we're going to hit her with another bucket of dice that gets doubled. She's part of the slow club. Four, eight, 12... 17. He's only 19, an honorary member of the slow club. 54. Is that after doubling? That's after doubling. I certainly hope that's after doubling because Shut if up. I'm hitting for 54, the game is over. <laughs> you broke the game. All right, with that, even as she staggers a bit from this claw hit and from the fact that her ankles are not both uh, suspiciously missing, um, just floating there. She's just in your hands. Yeah, she's just like, I'm a little. <laughs> Gotta she go for is. The wrist next. She stumbles and staggers. She's, she's pretty bloodied at this point. You have uh, done a solid number on her, uh, and it, she would not be able to take many more similar hits. Oh my god! Uh, a dwarf with less than 250 health. What? Uh, the dwarf's not. He is the, like <laughs> showing little battered, bruised signs, but he's still like he's, just, he's having a great time. He's laughing really hard. He really enjoys this. Something about a time. Um, you got one left, right? No, you intimidate her and swung twice. Intimidate two two. All right. Well, well, this guy's on the ground, and he's still just laughing. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold. It's it's a tiny horse, <laughs> and it's funny because he's a huge dwarf. But I can also do that. <laughs> Magnum thysium. And uh, <laughs> that's gonna provoke, as he incants a spell on the ground. I can't read that. It's a four. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, it's definitely a four. <laughs> Hey, I got hey. He's got it one ain't left. a four anymore. You can read? Would you like the Malachite? You know what? Give me this. We can change where the dice trays <laughs> are this. later. I didn't realize that they're kind of hard to look into for you guys right now. Chat gets a great it. angle, and, oh, and we see. don't. It's better. Um, 32. 32 is not quite going to catch his flat-footed. As uh, he starts to shift and his armor stretches and expands, the whip wrapped around his hand, extend, extending with him as he grows back into the room behind him, still laughing to match Marshall's enormous size, but oh. still prone, still slapping on the floor. <laughs> and it's funny because it's a pony, <laughs> but we're a huge dwarfs. I'm just sitting there, I'm just staring at him like, really? Well, really? it's your turn now, because that's his two actions, is casting at large. So he's going to grow to be large then. He's just really annoying. Speaking of stacking penalties, the fortunate also is enfeebled one until my turn. Oh, fair enough. I don't think she does anything with her strength, but I will keep it in mind. Uh, her damage. She'll lose a point of no. damage. No, uh, point of damage, true. No, she's a no, thief, she's She stacks damage. I, I kind of only have two choices. Yeah, I literally don't think she's strength for anything, but I'll keep it in mind. Uh, well then. <laughs> just laughing and growing. Uh, Gonna psych up, so... This is just anti-martial. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm you, but edgier. Apparently. <laughs> Wait, did did he have a meeting with Zarkin? Possibly. Possibly. Anyway. <laughs> gonna psych up, get some temporary hit points. Uh, and then I'm going to just... Stop it! I'm the only giant dwarf here! <laughs> well, his AC is now lower again, <laughs> because he's also large. That's true. Chance. Oh, the Malachite power even pass on the table. Doesn't work for anyone but Darp. I don't it's know why anyone uses it. It really only works for Uh, me. So that's probably going to miss with a 29. If it starts with 20, it's definitely not going to hit the Dwarf. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try this one. <laughs> Just Apparently, sample all of our delicious dice. Marshall one of them will come dice through today. for you. Turn off the gallery of North Foundry dice. I can't read that. It's a nine. I mean, if there's, a, if there's a place to blow terrible it's dice, this better. fight does not seem uh, to be terribly threatening. So that's, that's also, that's a 30. Uh, minus five for second attack? That's, that's counting. Oh, uh, 30 is, 
still also not going to do it. Oh, well. It's, it's well, then closer. I'll just sit here and be sad and grumpy. He's slamming. This dude's losing his mind laughing. You complained about all the tens, and now you have <laughs> This is what happens. Yeah. You had there. a gift. You had there. consistency, and you spit in its face. Uh, the fortunate does not find this nearly as funny. Uh, but she is now just flanking Trishik because there is a giant dwarf behind you. Uh, and she's just going to lash out as she can with her rapier, uh, trying to fight back against you. But you can tell in this fight that, like, you're... This is actually a really weird encounter. It's like Trishik and Nega Trishik versus uh, Marshall and Nega Marshall. And then you guys are also here helping. Yeah. Like, and they, and they, the good guys have spellcasters. Yeah, you must defeat your inner demons. You, it you, doesn't seem that hard. No, you seem to be... <laughs> you say that. You seem to be... <laughs> uh, having, the, having the better side of this is as against the fortunate you are clearly more practiced you are clearly more skilled uh -huh. whereas I've Marshall versus this <laughs> Dwerger who appears to be a dwarven demon <laughs> of <laughs> war <laughs> his name is <laughs> <laughs> pulls it out of the hat <laughs> we need a riot shield she's gonna freaking stab you <laughs> nimble dodge alright it's gonna be uh, nimble dodge, you flat-footed, so probably a wash there. 34. That is exact lethal. And she goes this time. She is just going to uh, stab exceptionally hard. Uh, just no longer trying to settle up or, like, rebalance your, or knock you off your stance or anything. Uh, really just resorting to fighting for her life. I have exactly enough D6s for this. One, 29 points of piercing damage. 26. And we will simply strike out once more. That's a natural one, so second swing definitely going to miss. I will turn invisible. Ooh. And she swings, and you just disappear. From in front of her. Specifically as a reaction for an enemy missing me, I can use an armor trinket to disappear and turn invisible as the second level spell. And as you just kind of vanish after this second complete miss, she looks at the Dwerger and looks around out to the rest of the party. Are you bloody kidding me? You well, don't, don't understand what you're doing here! Well, Come don't, on! Don't look at me, I don't know where he is. If you push forward, you'll be the doom of all of Kavler! And she's going to yell out, trying to intimidate Roshin, as you are the nearest person here that she just kind of yells around. It's it's somewhat thrown off of, like, any real level of fear it would have been by the giant dwarf absolutely losing his <laughs> mind that she is yelling past. And she's picking the anti-slavery zealot to try to talk out of fighting the slavers. I'll see. Maybe. 24? Uh, 24. <laughs> On your will, DC? Uh, that's actually, funny. That's um, adorable. Yeah, that's uh, actually a critical failure. So you uh, suffice to say you are not intimidated. Yeah. Why can't Jeez, she take a feared one for doing that? <laughs> <laughs> no, you. <laughs> Raz. Um, Raz is going to come down from the wall. Um, get a little bit closer. Just kind of looks at Resme. A little horse. Another uproarious bout of yes. laughter from the dwarf. This uh, is really he weird. He just can't get It's the funniest thing he's ever heard in his life, man. He's a dwerger. His life is very serious. He hasn't had made time for humor, much less puns. Now, here's a weird mix of emotions. <laughs> I feel like I overcome this man. I pull out the horn and just give the most ominous toot I can give as I dirge of doom. I think your thing is running out here, too. Yeah, that's gone. That's That's gone. So there is this now, round. Now it's Dirge of Doom time. Oh, in that case, uh, it wasn't a critical fail. It was just a really bad fail. Well, it's right now it wears off back oh, on okay, his okay, turn. Okay. Right now, yeah. So, okay, he is now frightened one while laughing about just the funniest tiny horse. He just can't get that image out of he his mind. He can't tell if the key is from the laughter. Like, do, you want, <laughs> do you want both? One duck-sized pony or a hundred pony-sized ducks? <laughs> Roshin, <laughs> get me out. <laughs> <laughs> Am I suffering? Oh, 
<laughs> All right. Um, well, I mean, this is, it's a very armored turkey, but it's laid out just like a turkey. So this is perfect. Um, so, a very big turkey. A very big turkey. Um, so uh, shut down and just start hacking away. <laughs> Your Excellency, a may wants to perhaps surrender. We can talk a bit more and slash. Just kind of as she's slashing down at this quivering mass of armored dwarf. Uh, let's see, that's a 14 plus uh, so it's a 37. 37 hits him. All right. If 37 doesn't hit the giant prone dwarf, we maybe leave. I mean, would be a five. All right, let's see here. See 11, a six. 12. 14, and that's uh, 18 points of slashing and fire. Uh, we let's swing it again. Uh, that's an 18 on the die, so it drops to a 13. So 13, if it's one lower in your previous row, that will also hit. It's beautiful. Just hacking away. Jesus. Nice. All righty. Uh, let's see. 12, 17, 25, 25, 6, 31 points for that one. Okay, and uh, damage. As you're damage. dropping a ton of damage here, uh, with this giant prone laughing uproariously form in front of you, it really is just a large target. And as you've been left to just hack away, he too is definitely nearing the end of, well, at least his uh, entertaining portion of this fight, <laughs> uh, possibly his entire life. <laughs> Very good. Uh, and uh, for her last action, she'll uh, kind of focus back on the uh, Guardian, uh, which will animate and flip a, a golden Morningstar round to kind of swing rather haphazardly at the Fortunate. <clears throat> Who is technically still flanked? Yeah. Is she still there? There's not rules for perceived threats she, anymore. Well, she doesn't know that I left. She's still on guard about Yeah, me she's being still there. worried. Yes, yeah, still flanked. Yeah, he's not undetected. Actually, if he, I probably if he was undetected, I probably couldn't flank. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you wouldn't know where he was either. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is that? 13. The 13, so that's going to be effectively a 3. But I feel uh, like you're probably not, not going to hit. hit. That's closer flanked, closer than it freaking should be, but no. <laughs> Even flanked and frightened one, 26 so isn't going to land. Guardian stays there and continues flanking for two Resume. Hey, you know what's really, really funny? Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Arctis. <laughs> Uh, and uh, that'll be an electric arc at both of them. It just save. zaps all around to see here. Re reflex saves. Crackles past him. I was hoping for a lightning bolt that would just pass by me harmlessly. Uh, Pronosaurus is going to get a 30 even. That's going to fail. And the fortunate is going to get... You know you want to reroll it. I only have it. one villain point left. A 26. I'm pretty sure That's it doesn't critically fail. That's also going to fail. Okay, they're both going to get zapped. Electrified, isn't that funny? I don't quite get your humor right now. <laughs> it's actually more of a shocking turn of events for both of them. Ha, I get that. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be 22 points of electric damage. Okay, so 22 ripping through the fortunate cord is going to both of them. Buckle her knee. Well, yeah, but for her, that's that's enough for her. Oh, okay. uh, for her knees, buckle, and uh, in front of the invisible Trashik here, she's going to crumple down to the floor. And she looks like she's turning to respond to Roshi and is, opens her mouth to be interrupted by this blast of lightning. You see flare through her face. And as she drops, you see her knees kind of sag and her body start to droop, but her head doesn't go any lower. Her torso kind of extends and elongates as she drops the rapier and it clatters down to the ground. As she falls in front of Sheik, you can see her hair replaced with a, uh, a fairly bright crimson tied back in a tight little knot at the, at the top of her neck. And as she has completely transformed into a totally different human person. Called it! Wearing full Scarlet Triad leather armor. I knew that was a fake. I knew it wasn't a real one. It's also going to do 22 damage to this trigger. He too is here. He also is having a really I mean, it's bad kind of hard day. not to notice the know. giant laughing prone turkey. So I was going to get ready to breath of life her if it was actually the fortunate who died after this. <laughs> <laughs> you got one action left, I believe. Uh, Fireball. I, <laughs> I, 
you know, it's, it's actually less funny when it actually puts them down, but I feel so much better knowing that it wasn't the real fortunate. Well, We've come so far from the great distress over disintegrating a guy to making a hilarious joke about murdering somebody. I, I didn't actually <laughs> know like it was It's been like three entire her. sessions. <laughs> I, I didn't mean for it to kill them. Uh, oh, I, on it. I guess I'll... Uh, that is guys, a triad agent. Those are like guards. You, you guys go. You guys go get him down. Beat him down. She'll there's just kind of root them on. She's having a great time, does she? Inspire others. Well, there's um, there's some ankles. <laughs> You're even on the side ankles. with the ankles. <laughs> <laughs> He's facing the other way. So he got ankles. You got a primed Dwerger booty directly in front of you. So I'm going to obviously attack him, and um, definitely flanks. Definitely. It's regular invisibility, right? So you're going to reappear. You're going to yeah. start swinging. But I mean, you're flanked anyway, so like he's flat-footed regardless. Flat-footed and still frightened. <laughs> I'm going to climb up on him, and um, an invisible Pretty sure you're, you're is going to remove his throat. You're kill him. Uh, yeah, you're, this Trushy is just has some deep issues about there is There is no universe where you don't kill this man with, well, a, with a crit there. <laughs> with a sneak attack. <laughs> the power crit. of Malachite. <laughs> Only for you. Only for you. It only works. That's really anyway. average. That's above average. 4, 8, 12. Hmm. It's 23. 31, so 62. You'd be super dead. So, uh, <laughs> invisible, you got an easy leg to mount. And the rest of you would see just as he's got all the time in the world to pick his spot work around the scale mill, his throat just tears across as Trashik just appears. Probably a spray of blood hitting his invisible form before he shows up to replace it, standing atop the Stwerger, who uh, did not find that quite as funny. The mm. laughter was getting too. annoying. He did not want to hear it anymore. Um, <sighs> it, it's, Be very careful how I react to jokes around you. <laughs> it's, it's not the fortunate, but I feel like one of them should probably live so that we can, you know, talk to them. Can we get that person back up? Like, do you think they're really dead? Oh, it's a little bit too late for that, I'm afraid. I don't know. Her eyeballs were boiling in the sockets. That would definitely explain why I could not see any uh, anything wrong. They assume the appearance exactly. And as this does uh, kind of become at least a little more clear, uh, the confirmation this is in fact an imposter for the fortunate. <gasps> There's definitely plenty da, da, da. to investigate here. Is she an imposter, a mogus? Stop. But <laughs> pretty sus. I'm going to ban you from the entire YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to find a way. Hey. Before we look through uh, anything telling they might have or the rest of this area, as this Dwerger shrinks back down, this magic leaving him as he slowly decompresses, sagging and losing It's the blood <laughs> leaving his throat. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take. I mean, you're not wrong. Our mid-show break. Uh, I'll double check Christine's mic. I'll see if anything weird is happening there. Uh, but we'll be back in a couple of minutes to continue on to the Hidden Forge here and see what other secrets will lay beyond. Uh, this is clearly what a Scarlet Triad and literal Dwerger are operating within the city of Kavler. So if there's a nexus for all the problems the town has had, it's gonna be this. I've also confirmed that Animate Rope does work on attended objects, so we'll uh, do that next time, too. I mean, unless you found a tweet from Jason Bullman that says that, oh. there's not a confirmation. A random oh. dude on a forum doesn't confirm anything. I found but we'll be back. Let's give Jason a call real quick. <laughs> hey, Jason, I got another question for you. He won't answer me anymore since the beta thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's your own fault, honestly. That's BS. This is why we can't do dumb things. Now he just assumes all my questions are paid. Yeah. <laughs> Rightfully. But uh, we, we'll be back in a couple of minutes, everybody. Stay tuned. Yeah. Don't go too far. we got some highlights for you. The Malachite is completely unfair and will work to... But only advantage. for you. Only for you. You yes. can he's promise only, other people that. He's the only one that believes in its power. The rest of us are that skeptical. Was a three. Yeah, but that's you because when you roll it, it right frivolously, <laughs> it's displeased with you. I don't think so. It gave me plenty of 20s already today. It that was because you weren't rolling it, it does frivolously. Not hold a grudge. You were rolling it to do something. As we come back in here, <laughs> Sound of Battle having fallen silent throughout the connecting, uh, this adjoining hallway of the Hidden Forge of this strange triad hideout. Uh, as Marshall shrinks back down, there's rage <sighs> ending and the yes. Dwerger for now. 
His rage being temporarily suspended. His swagger is shrinking much more slowly as his, like, I don't know, great value brand magical substitute for Marshall's <laughs> rage slowly leaves his body. The floor is yours, my friends. Huh. Told you it wasn't the fortunate. I'm no way. Gonna um, approach the not fortunate. The unfortunate. The unfortunate. <laughs> the unfortunate. Um, you went is out it, of is your it way a human? to not make a pun. Or is it... She is a, she is a human. Um, you don't recognize her, uh, but she is rather slender, uh, not egregiously so, but uh, a very lithe kind of build uh, with, again, bright red hair that's pulled back into a small knot at the base of her skull just to keep it out of her way. That could just be uh, the blood, though. Her armor... <laughs> <laughs> her armor <laughs> is very similar leathers to what you would have seen some of the triad agents that you guys have fought throughout the inner seas so far. Uh, much the same standard issue insignia planted up on the shoulder. Uh, she also would have an insignia hanging next to uh, a pouch on her belt. Another one of the small triad badges that you can add to your grand collection of oh, triad badges. Oh, we've been collecting badges. manacles. Oh, you, you switched to manacles now. Well, she well, definitely had those. Well, the original dwarves didn't have badges. Oh, they didn't bring them, right? It was the. Uh, it, it was, was just only the, manacles, so yeah. that's what we started collecting. So you add manacles to your collection because she definitely had a set. But uh, she had a bunch of magic stuff on her that I could see. Yeah, the, you, you surely hear armor and her weapons are enchanted. You know by now, and it's not no difficulty to really find the runes that are in them. And again, I'm not going to make you roll at this point for a plus one resilient armor or a plus one striking rapier. Like you've seen so many jillions of those runes at this point, that I just assume that's something you can identify by now. Um, I'm definitely not above looting, looting the body, going over the body. <laughs> None of you recognize her, but because it has been some time, you would think back to some of the stories that you had heard from people like Talos in, uh, in town, the traveling priest, and some of the other stories you've heard about some disappearances. She does seem to fit the description of the woman that many of these people had met in the Earthfire District shortly before they disappeared. Hmm. Hmm. Well, um, is there anything on him? I've never seen a Druger before. Marshall is uh, going to go up to the, the, the body of the Druger and uh, start rummaging around and see what he can find. Well, that whip for one. Snooting through. You know, he's clearly got a very powerful whip. You felt that one. By felt, I mean you put it in my beard of holding. <laughs> uh, he doesn't have a whole lot on him, uh, save for his battle equipment. In fact, he has nearly nothing. He does have a small coin purse. Uh, he appears to either have been paid well or be a very well-off Dwerger, as he has... 50 individual gold pieces in his coin wow. pouch, which is a pretty substantial sum for someone to just be carrying. Other than that, he... <laughs> yeah, who, who carries that much mm -hmm. cash For non-protagonists to be carrying around with him. Uh, he has the whip. He has the scale mail. Uh, across his back, he also has a compact composite longbow, uh, which also seems to be set with some runes. Again, I'm not going to make you identify plus one striking. Plus one striking composite longbow and plus one resilient scale mail. That he has, though his mail is thick and heavy. Each of the plates, each of these scales, uh, a very wide band of this dark iron metal. It's quite hefty, significantly heavier than traditional scale mail of its time, hmm. uh, or of its kind, that made him pretty exceptionally hard to hit. Uh, he does tucked into a uh, pockets of the jerkin he wore under the mail have a single scroll as well. Hmm. And his whip you will have to roll to identify because it's pretty beefy. Uh, but uh, Trashik, who is not at three hero points, Chad does not like it when Trashik is not at three hero points. <laughs> and Darmason would like to rectify Trashik not being at three hero points. As much we as use this immediately. You I always do. You. We, we know this. Hmm. hmm. That whip is really interesting. Uh, can I take a look at it, Marshall? Pulls it out of his beard again. That's and gross. <laughs> uh, she'll take a, out a handkerchief and kind of take off the oil or whatever cheese or whatever was on it. Probably potato it starch. It's potato potato Marshall's starch. Beard. It's little bits of the potato skin actually kind of clinging to it. 
That's a decent amount of his blood also, which is probably from where he hit him, but might be from the beard. You can't super oh, easily tell. Um, here, take some of these. They've started to smell like a mixture of chocolate and coffee for you. I'm not really sure how I feel about that, uh, but they should make you feel better. Essential oils. Splash, 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 splash. Uh, okay. Coffee beans and arsenic. So roll, um, the, oh yeah, you can't critically fail. So you can roll the Arcana chick. Because you can identify this pretty quickly. You don't have to wait well, 10 minutes. Well, that's a two. You know what? I am so sick and tired of sucking at these that I'm going to use one of those. She knows a lot about magic. She's just really bad at practical application of identification. <laughs> she can do the fighty she's... part. She's just like, this is boring. This is just homework. She's a sorcerer. This doesn't look like Are the Are you kidding me right now? This doesn't match the picture in that book I read. That's a two, but backwards. <sighs> no, that's a three. Oh, it looked like a five. I hate you. No, it is a five. What's your, what's your oh, total? You're wrong. <laughs> I hate you. Uh, 28. <laughs> Yeah, 28 is uh, not going to be enough to identify the rune set to this. You can see that it has can a roll trio. A thievery check to identify? <laughs> no. It has a trio of runes set mm -hmm. within. Uh, and they are all into the, the line of the handle of the whip itself. All kind of merged together, almost like a block of pseudo dwarven script. It's uh, like it's not words or letters, it's not something you can read. But the style of runes does vary by creator and by culture and these very angular uh very geometric shapes that go down this band he clasps in his hand they give this whip some considerable power you just don't know what it is she gets really distracted by the fact that it still has marshall's blood on it and she kind of like jerks away from it and so doesn't really seem to be able to identify it uh but i suppose i can at least make you feel better now that you've bled all over me again it's not the first time nor it'll be the last you know better uh, let's start you out with four of those and see what we do. Okay. So as you're healing him, Raz, is your, did you come over to rifle through yeah. the Scarlet Tribe woman's body? Yeah. Rifling through, seeing what all she's got. Oh, uh, you find she has a lot talked around her person, a lot more than just a simple rapier, uh, rapier in your clothes. She has several pouches and a bandolier uh, with various vials and tinctures tucked within. You know the Scarlet Tribe already has a lot of access to alchemical components, and she is no exception. Uh, she has quite a few, uh, what look to be six distinct, small, unlabeled doses of stuff. Do I have any of those in my formula book? Maybe. What do you have? How much stuff is in your formula book? Is it like Everything a, that we've encountered already with the Scarlet Triad is in my formula book. So any addle brain or any not killer brain. poison? Or I don't... I think you have. If we've encountered it, has. it's been put in my book. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she has actually got different stuff than anyone you've met before. Okay. Uh, you could still, if you have an like alchemy kit, attempt to test it and figure out what it is. I it's carry not a even, full alchemy lab. I'd, with if you me. want to sit down and do that right now in the middle of this hall after a big fight, probably but like, not right here. But you can keep them for later. Just like write six fake fortunate poison, uh, poisons, and I'll know what we're talking about for later. Poisons. Unfortunate poisons. But the other thing you find. Now, one part of her disguise didn't turn back with her. Uh, it's said to be the only thing other than her weapon that she maintained in her guise as the fortunate cave scream. Uh, on a thin silver chain around her neck, there is a signet ring, a fairly sizable ruby and sapphire ring on a thick, wide band. The gemstone's almost interlocking across the top of it. Okay. Hmm. As he's just raffling everything through, he just takes stuff out of pockets, sets it neatly on the ground, just goes and... I don't know what any of this stuff is. Um, He'd also pull out a blowgun that she had, like, tucked in a sleeve, just a small little dart pipe that, funnily enough, has a rune <laughs> set near the mouthpiece. It is a plus one blowgun. Woo! That uh, rhymes. As a plus one blowgun. As well as a small assortment of, dart, of needle-tipped darts. Uh, though you don't know what these tinctures or poisons she has are specifically the vials they're all contained in have a stoppered top with a very small hole set in the center uh that pretty much exactly matches the tips of these middle darts they're clearly meant to be poison and it's a sort of th assortment of things that she had on her person everything presumably poison is piled up and handed to, sh to sheep <laughs> <laughs> dead <laughs> <laughs> Yep, I was about to expect the result. 
Resume preternaturally sensing that there might be jewelry over there. Sure. And Braz has already Money. pocketed the thing. I say you laid it out of the floor. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. went through everything. Heard the jingle. <laughs> no. Well, he has... Let me see it. <laughs> Don't worry. Get I know it's out of your sparkly. Mouth. Put it down right now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have here? <laughs> Ooh. Puts it on. Bites it's... you. Oh. It's, it's probably fairly large for your fingers. Put two, uh, put between two. I don't <laughs> know if it's quite that large. That is incredibly sizable. Um, I say, you mind if I it try? It was a big toe ring. Uh, <laughs> sweetheart, don't get between <laughs> don't a woman joke. and her jewelry right now. No, um, I mean, all right. Oh, your jewelry is it? What's the signet on it anyway? I don't know. Well, have I seen I'm it before? At it's it. not. If it's a, it looks like the gems together as they kind of connect. It, it does look like they form some kind of an emblem, but it's not actually immediately recognized what it is. Hmm. Uh, it's not. It, it looks dwarven. Dwarven make has a very distinctive style that you've become quite familiar with in your stay in Kofler, and it Bulky. is certainly dwarven. But it's not a signet of any of the guilds or Kofler or even Sagarakar. It might be a family line. Uh, seems most likely. Lower obscure signets. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lower obscure signets. This is my bard friend. I mean, I, mean, I like could look at it and maybe think if I know any dwarves. You could, if you, do you have like a dwarven lore? I, I mean, the closest thing I have is warfare, but okay, that's all probably dwarves know each other. <laughs> You're a jerk. If you, if you want to give me lore, obscure dwarven signet rings, Mr. Bard. <laughs> Freaking just roll it. Just do whatever you want. Lord. For a total of a... You know you want to re-roll that. <laughs> I kind of do. Don't say the number. Just re-roll it. It's it's good, though. You got to use the points. Um, Stop being a better dude. He's being a bad influence, and he's making me lose my train of thought. That could be um, a 19. Shut up. <laughs> do the math. 33. What? 33. 33. Uh, with a 33... You don't know exactly what it is, but you do recognize it. You have seen this before once in Fortunate Cave Scream's home. It was embossed on the bottom of a portrait just hung on the wall in her, uh, in her like living room. You definitely recognize it. You still don't actually know what exactly it is. Ah. That's probably Miss Cave Scream's yes. signet ring. Oh, the one that went missing. Oh. She's been looking for it. We'll have to give it back to her. Oh, she'll get a nice sack of chips, I'm sure. I, I don't want money for it. I just want to give her no, back her ring. I didn't say money. She's going to give you chips. Gambling oh, tokens. Oh, the gamble. Oh, you're right. That would be fun. <laughs> but uh, with that, the only thing really left that you have, it's been a minute. If you share the tradition of the spell, you can just read a scroll, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So between the literally all of you. Um, I think primal you don't is have the only primal. one we're missing. Good news. Not a druid. It's not good, Barry. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> or shillelagh. Or shillelagh, oh. the other primal spell. Um, <laughs> you can read it. There's also dinosaur form. <laughs> There's three and summon primal giant. spells. And summon giant. Uniquely uniquely primal spells. There's so like shillelagh and goodberry and dinosaur form and like that's... I'll take, don't make me. <laughs> I can take dinosaur form as an Aruxi. I kind of not, honestly I not I thought surprised you were going to say all. something else. But <laughs> uh, opening it up, between the three of you, I'm not going to bother looking up what school it is. It might be in several of your traditions actually. It is a, sc a scroll of discern location. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh, that's uncommon. It is in fact uncommon. That's a powerful divination effect. Now you'll always be able to know where I am. You know, that was one of my plans, but so, now we know we don't need it anymore. First off, we're going to learn that spell. Thank you. Yeah. We're not going to go and just burn that spell. Yeah, that's so you could use it once, like right now. <laughs> if you learn it, that takes time. They where need to prepare is it. the nearest seafood roll shack? <laughs> <laughs> you can use it immediately. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, right there. Uh, I think primal spells. <laughs> Wow, there's nearly as many primal <laughs> spells as carpenters. In <laughs> I don't usually read it. things out of chat in the middle of a stream, oh but chat that is point. way Lawyer too Rose. powerful. Give this, man, give this the, man a point. The energy of the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That, that, is, be that is a I, Wait, no, actually completely. There's more. 
because one of the carpenters was a fake. That's true. <laughs> You're right. So all the, the, uh, they, one like, of the three carpenters was just the Guild of Arms plant. <laughs> I've completely forgotten about the Carpenters Guild, like most of Kalvar. Oh. 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 See, we're oh. in a dungeon fight in Scarlet Triad, and we still find time to bag on the Carpenters Guild. Come on. Just for the record, there's always time to pick on the nerds. I mean, mm. uh, the Carpenters Guild. I mean, the Carpenters Guild knew she was a plant. They were just like, happy to have a third member. That's just really what well, well, She's legit. Legitimately better than most of us. <laughs> <laughs> Not only are we very few, we're terrible for craft. <laughs> you never get the chance to practice. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Make a chair sometimes? <laughs> when they have the wood. You stupid idiot. Ooh, it's a birdhouse. <laughs> hey, oh, for all the birds flying around <laughs> <Kavla. laughs> We're horrible people. <laughs> you can make a bad house. Look, there's, there's a Carpenter's Guild allow and there's nothing wrong. There's some there's the most skilled in out there that are like writing sternly worded messages to Paizo Look, right now. I guarantee you none of those woodworkers live in caves. <laughs> <laughs> How many miles underground? All of them. Uh, few. <laughs> it's under a huge mountain. Yeah. So oh, it's that's so still Agtite. <laughs> oh my god. I love them. They're, they're great. <laughs> Do you? We Do you like love them? The Do you the really? Carpenters in all of Kavlar. <laughs> the best carpenters. <laughs> they do excellent. Work. Anyway, actually, Trishik really has Trishik and Resume have craft. They're probably better carpenters. They're the best seafood in all of Wyoming. Me too, right here <laughs> for the masters. <laughs> all right, so, all right, we're good. We're good. We're fine. We, we got it in. We had to get it out of our Dude, system. Ramen House is the best noodle house in Ocala. <laughs> <laughs> Technically true. I hate you because it's not wrong. Oh. It's like, it's not wrong at all. <laughs> all right. So with Ooh, that, okay. that's about everything that, that these okay. uh, fine folk have on their person. So you're left in this, again, this, this L-shaped chamber here. And you can now see pretty clearly there are doors that lead off in a variety of different directions. You can leave this room from almost any angle. Huh. Uh, there's doors that you fought, like Trishik and the fake cave screen fought next to a door. And there's another at the far end across from the double doors. So as you come further around the corner, there's a pair of doors set into the wall behind you. And of course, another couple all the way down to the far end of this angle. I think it's fair to say that deeper within. if uh, they had any reinforcements anywhere around here, they would have made their way here by now. Now, notably, as you come into this chamber and the sound of fighting is falling and you have a moment to just kind of exist, you can hear several things uh, that seem to be coming from a few different directions around this hallway. Uh, While well, the stone hall carries sound itself, it echoes uh, and sounds of your clashes of steel rang uh, throughout the chamber. It's set with relatively thick doors and obviously deep underground carved from stone. So the sounds don't carry terribly far beyond really just room to room. So if you're hearing several of these things here, they must either be nearby or must be a very loud and massive production of some kind. There's no perception check necessary to hear this. As you come into the hallway from straight across the double door, straight forward where you'd entered, you can hear a mechanical grinding. Oh. Mm. Like a grating sound of some kind, like an engine misfiring constantly, a clattering of a misaligned chain, a horrid crank of metal being crushed under its own weight or its own machinations. Uh, it's very... Uh, it's pretty loud, <laughs> even here in the hallway. Now with this fighting done, and you can like really isolate what it is. I wonder what that is. Trishik, maybe a perception check. Seek boy. Uh, thirty-two. Now thirty-two. You're pretty confident that y you can't obviously tell how far this complex extends in any given direction. But to the south, where the sound is coming from, uh, this machinery is. It must be much louder than the fight that just happened. Uh, anybody that is in there could very well be completely unaware hmm. that you even come in here. Oh, as well, you can hear a second set of noise. Uh, noise is coming from further down the hallway, far at its terminus. You can hear a much more rhythmic pounding or a series of pounding, a sound that you'd be all too familiar with having lived in Cobbler for a few weeks of a hammer crashing against an anvil. But this doesn't just sound like handwork. This 
sounds like a giant working a forge or something. And there's another sound beneath it, much subtler. A thick bubbling of some kind. Like a pudding boiling. Hmm. You're not sure at all what that is. It's much quieter, but it sounds like it's also pretty far away. Hmm. It's very possible that to the south and to the west, this fight could have gone completely unheard. You don't know what's to the east. You don't hear anything from that direction. There is a door. That could be where the magma is pouring out of, and we're hearing the bubbling. That makes sense. If there's areas where they remain unaware of us, we should probably explore the rest of the areas first, the quieter places. Okay. Would Are those be, doors uh, made of wood? They would be made of wood, yes. Oh, that's what the carpenters were doing down here. <laughs> where are we heading? We'll Let's try this door first. Yes. Sure. It's the best east one. not to leave anyone behind us. East door. The one so as you're heading to. over to uh, the east side of the room, and you uh, you open the door next to the body of the fallen fake cave scream uh, to reveal a fairly crammed chamber. The entryway in this hallway have been pretty open, but as you step forward into this room, you would see a great amount of beds. Hmm. Uh, not even just doubled bunk beds, but triple deckers. Hmm. Uh, the mattress is kind of close to each other, uh, fairly cloistered and uncomfortable amount of space, really, between the mattresses that you have to fit in quite tightly. Oh, it's the Navy. Uh, it, the, uh, it is the Navy. Yeah. <laughs> Filling every wall and corner of this room. Uh, scattered around at the foot or under these various tripled bunk beds are an assortment of tattered clothes, bit of rags, and lumpy blocks and ends of soap. A couple of low-quality combs and a single dirty cracked mirror. Looks like the personal effects of uh, the denizens of the beds, which you can see. Now, this room would definitely have heard the fight. And as you enter the door, no one rushes sword in hand to meet you. In fact, they shy away. Uh, you can see quite a few not terribly well-off, mostly dwarven, but interspersed with some human folk that are at the furthest reaches of the room, either in their beds, trying very hard and failing to pretend they didn't hear anything that was happening, laying faced away from you, knuckles white clutching at their ragged blankets or fully hiding behind these beds, fearful in cover. Their faces are dirty and their forms rather gaunt. Yeah. They are clearly prisoners that have not been cared for terribly well. well I would then. Uh, recommend all of you take your leave. Right, right. Slavery's canceled. Everyone up. The door is open. Be on your way. If you will go to the gods, they should take care of you. And you say this to all of them walking in, the heroes of Breach Hill, you're free, <laughs> fellows, have no fear. Well, they do definitely still have some fear. Uh, they're going to walk this... over to the dead Scarlet Triad member, drag her back into the room, and throw her into the middle of the room. That'll cheer him up. <laughs> throw a corpse. <laughs> uh, makes your chic happy. I mean, Res makes me Resume happy. will go in, and uh, she'll kind of uh, hold up uh, her hands, and she'll say... Uh, in Dwarvish, just to repeat, to make sure that they understand. Uh, it really is okay. Um, we came here to help. We don't want to harm you at all. Please just make your way back to Kovlar and find safety. Go to, um, go to the guild hall and tell them what happened and that we found you. You can see recognition in many of the dwarven faces here of clearly now understanding as you would come in and yelled some weird war cry they didn't understand at all and then thrown a corpse <laughs> in the room. Um, but <laughs> I was worried about that. <laughs> it did not come off how you wanted it to. But uh, as you begin to explain things in dwarven, you're the human point. The humans, I mean, yeah, some of them would understand. Some of the dwarves, a couple of the dwarves even understand. There's probably nine uh, scattered slaves in the room right now. Uh, maybe two humans, seven dwarves. The humans and maybe one of the dwarves would have shown any sign of understanding what Roshin said. And I, I'm going to get a villain point. You're going to get two, you jerk. Oh, it's a great day. I do get two. I also got a hero point if you screw He up. did. 
a lot of stuff coming around. Well, let me get yeah, let me get these. I, got uh, I don't normally do this. Hero points. So here is there. a villain points. So that the Cobbler <laughs> Carpentry Guild can get some revenge for their besieged name. <laughs> <laughs> Karmic justice. Can we besiege it if it never built up? And Edawir, one of the greatest suppliers of my wrath. If your dice float right, <laughs> you're gonna need this. <laughs> Wait my RNG a little bit. But you're right, Marshall. Yeah, you did get one uh, yeah. while I was setting the scene here. From Cert to B, can't have our favorite dwarf. It's zero hero points. Take that, and thank, thank you, you, everyone, for your support. But as they understand now between the uh, common and the dwarven explanation, they still seem fearful. But one dwarf near back in the corner, a uh, kind of hoarse voice, rattles out. Oh. How are we supposed to be safe now? Dear Grenthor, have all our heads. We can't leave. What? What? Who will have your heads? The, the demon. The forge spurned. Okay, obviously. Oh, we'll go kill him too. Obviously, they do not understand my message. This is in, that one would be in Dwarven. So. Yeah. I don't uh, know what they're saying. Sorry, they're translating. not leaving. Yeah, but I so, assume somebody will translate. Uh, I'm going to go get always in translation the, uh, the Dwager. Blogger. Dwager, Blogger. The, the dead guy, and also bring his body into the room. Like, clearly, they don't understand. They need proof they're both dead. You bring it in. Uh, one of the humans, who uh, was the one who decided it was a great idea to continue laying in bed and pretending to be asleep, um, was kind of getting some attention drawn over. And uh, she's got real long, at this point, kind of ragged, knotted, grimy black hair. Uh, and she kind of looks like... Like a toddler, trying to peek without getting caught. I see. I'll give her a smile. It's okay. I'd give yeah. her one too, but she'd freak out. Yeah. The teeth. Yeah. <laughs> you see? They've, they've killed him. He's dead. They've... He's not going to hurt you anymore. And uh, the dwarf in the back calls out. I'm not worried about the light-skinned twerker. Horsebane will have us all. And you know that Triad will take it out on the rest of the Kovler, on our families. Well, they, they, and Dwarfers, they can't take it all on you and your families if they're all dead. And I think that's kind of the plan, right? Yes, that's exactly the plan, yes. Oh, show them the bag, show them the bag. Oh, yes, I'd like that, wouldn't they? Uh, <laughs> tip the bag of Scarlet Triad manacles over. No, We're the, well practiced at this. Go woman. tell them, Raz. The woman now like rolled fully over in the bed at this point. Just kind of looks over, still mostly under a blanket. Can't see much of her body. She uh, moves the blanket, and, like reaches out with a hand to like kind of paw at them, and, like see if they're real almost. And you can see that while she looks fairly malnourished, her face is gone. She is absolutely ripped, mm -hmm. as is basically everybody else in this room. These slaves have clearly been exposed to vigorously hard labor. And it shows they are like lean, tuned, fed exactly enough to remain alive and to be strong, but not healthy or well. Mm. You've met enough Scarlet Triad alchemists that you're sure the Triad's more than capable of figuring that out. And she touched them and sees they're real. Kind of cracks a little bit of a smile. That's what I told you. It's. I don't know why you dwarves are afraid of these. Dead looking things. They're just a man like the rest of them. They and, die uh, just like anybody else. And the, uh, a couple, uh, the, the mood in the room definitely seems to turn. A couple of them are kind of coming closer, you, 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 like kind of peeking around the beds, moving a little closer to the middle of the room, waddling out in their tattered rags and their simple clothes they have. Uh, each of them, again, looking like they have clearly been exposed to some incredible labor. Um, and Dwarf in the back, still immobile. I... It don't matter none. Not to enter. Not the forge spurned. It doesn't matter if you kill him, if Torag won't take him. This is in Dwarven. This is in Dwarven. It's translated yeah. back. Right. Yeah. Um, the human actually is also speaking Dwarven to most of the group here. Um, everything Dave said has been dwarven. But uh, yeah, you have enough people to speak it among the group. I just assume translations are yeah. happening. I'm not yeah. worried about that. You... What? What? What, what is this forge? Spurned? Spurned. And uh, 
sport. Oh, they were talking Sporty about it. Remember? Looks, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Was, was it the, the thing that you were talking about? The Heta, Heta tight? Uh, the... Heracite. Heracite. That's the name of it. What's it, what's, you, what's, it, what's it look like? Ugly? Big? <sighs> tall? Small? <sighs> Dwarfish. Dwarfish? It's, it's Dwarfish. a massive Hulkin reject from Torag's own forges. Like a dwarf. I, but massive and swollen. Fire in oh, his we have, eyes. We have one of those. Hi. <laughs> oh, well, that's no problem. Not going to translate that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's absolutely no issue for my group. My my good friend, Rasheen. She's very good at. You um, don't understand. It, it's a thing, not of anything on the world or under it. A being born of fire and hate. Oh. It's. It's I mean, the power of the Forgotten Sun manifest. I'm also one of those things. Well, you're you're not though. So. Yeah, you're, you're definitely not a heresite. I've I've read I a mean, lot I'm of books a about a lot of things, not of this world, and um, I know a lot of ways to take care of them. It's like, what's the word here? Not hard. And <laughs> if you have the right tools and the right know-how, the girl on the the bed near the door. Kind of turns and kind of awkwardly scoot her way out of the bed. There's not really enough space for her to stand up normally. But she gets up to the edge of it, sitting kind of arched down. Uh, blanket still up sort of around her. Severin's head and kind of comes up from beneath the bed to kind of meet her. Hi there. And she switches to common. Who are you? Why, why have you come for us? You're not even dwarven. You don't look like you're from Cobbler, and you don't look like merchants. We're, uh, we've been deputized, you might say. Uh, we're something of, uh, experts on the triad. We've been taking them apart all over the continent. This place, this place is next. Approximately how many pairs of manacles would you say we have? Oh, we have 26. I've been writing it down on a little bag. Good luck, I, These, well, this is still uncommon. Most of these men and women here, are, they're very... Fearful. And it's true. They have a, a massive beast. We've all worked turns for his forges at the end of the hall. <laughs> but if you've if you've slain these two, well, then those on the machine should be free to the south. Have you seen to them? Not yet, but now that we know that they're there, we'll most certainly go do that next. These are the guards here. There's no one else there. Then we'll see to them next, but you all have to go. And she stands up, stands up kind of staggering. You don't have to tell me twice. Go. I'm not staying. And uh, if you'll let her, we'll immediately, like, looking at each of you, kind of nodding, really very thankful. Remember, we were but, like, to let them go from sort of the bewildered. The room. She's immediately going to come out and turn back to the rest of the group. And then Dwarven, what? Come on! You're not going to get another chance like this. No. Go back Random to the traveling guild heroes hall. aren't going to show up again. Go back to the guild hall and you tell the council what happened immediately. I, I can do that. Which guild? I've only really spoken with the anvilers. I only the, carry their the words. Anvilers, Do the yes. anvilers. That'll work. Right. Um. The forge, forge master knows about our question. knows about our mission. I, oh, I've never met the forge master. Take, I, only, I have a contact I meet with. Take it's, this ring back to her and see that it's given to the fortunate cave scream. Though that way they'll know it's from us. All right. I can. I can do that. Go. It's okay. We'll and, rescue uh, your friends. She, takes this ring and goes to leave. Most of the rest of the dwarves and the other human manates in here will all kind of slowly also shuffle past this pile of manacles and these two bodies you've shown them, uh, kind of peeking through the doorway to confirm there is not another army of triad here to meet them before moving and making their way, each of them knowing where to go for the stairs. They've clearly stayed and worked here for some time. Um, and the woman, as she gets through the doorway, Turns around, smile on her face. <laughs> the guard statues are gone. We're truly free. We can just leave. Oh yes, we did take care of those. <sighs> like elated at the rubble of stone Ms. golems Mr. strewn across the floor. Mr. Chishik took care of them, mostly him. Oh, he certainly did. I do kind of feel like an idiot that we just could have gotten around them, but I guess that's for later. But uh, <laughs> as most of them filter and make their way out, you're left with a pair of dwarves, two men, who while they have come out from their hiding, one in the corner who had spoke fearfully of Renther, and another 
who had been near him, shaking their heads. The first dwarf. I... I can't. It's not safer than staying here. At least I know they won't kill us if I keep doing what they want. As long as rent their heart pain still lives. If that much can even be said of him. I can't. I can't. Poor, poor man. He's been, he's been pushed very far. Well then, here. Stay here while we go take them down and have some food. Oh. I'll give them a bunch of rations. You can't. He'll look at it. Just kind of nod. You have to do something. If, if Renter finds out, if he knows what's happened here, he'll take it out on the rest of everyone. I can bear his blows. Not everyone here can. Not anymore. If they can't bear them, then they should leave. The triad. These people. They've infested Kovler. They'll find us. We can't leave. Now, do you expect them to find you before we find them? I have a very good track record. I don't know how it is you've arrived here. The he's speaking Dorvin? Or you've gone to translate? Translating. Translating. And he'd kind of look up to you, but look at the translator. I, I don't know how the group of you have found you right here. Truth be told, it's a divine miracle. He acted in his door, Egg's hammer. But... I can't. I can't take the risk. Stay here. Uh, let's go see to the others. They're not going to get any more hurt staying here. Uh, Don't back behind us. Open. Let me post the points of this out. You can hear the grinding. Don't open that door. Don't saddle the rest of them with this curse. Let them plead their ignorance to enter. If you can't, if you aren't confident, that you can finish this. What are we betting our lives on it as it is? I. With also theirs. I can respect it. Yeah. Is there n for sure no one else in there? I don't know. Uh, the main, these two here are the faces I've seen the most. But there are others, more like this human woman, wearing similar garb that have come and gone. Hmm. I've not been here often, usually just running food and water. Portions, no chemical sorts. A lady delivers them. Long blonde hair. I never seen her not wearing her goggles. Long brown apron draped to her feet. Hmm. Oh, good, an alchemist. At least those are easy woman. to kill. I've never seen anyone take such pleasure in others' pain. We've seen a few. The triad tends to attract those kinds. They bleed and die like everyone else. Should we go tell her that slavery is cancelled? I don't care about her. She's a weak woman inflicting her will through weird tinctures. But Ranther. Ranther's a force. Tell me what, we'll take care of him. If you then. mean to fight him, I can't tell you what he's capable of. But I can tell you at least what I've seen from working alongside him. Hmm. Oh, do tell. Oh, the man stands near 12 feet tall. And he can lift and move an anvil the size of a of a pony without the smallest amount of effort. His armor's wrapped around him in chains. I don't know if he needs them to keep the pieces together. But uh, someone someone laid hand on him once as he was casting him across the room just reactively in defense. He tossed him in the damn lava. Do the chains do anything? I don't know. But they don't normally go so far as to kill us. I don't know why they keep us alive. To turn the wheel, I guess. As he gestures back to the southern door. To work their anvils, to fix their gear. To forge their tools. What kind of tools? Weapons. Hammers. Mm. Chisels. Tongs. The man who laid a hand on him was thrown in the lava. I just for touching the chain. <gasps> oh, hmm. was he a priest? Was he somebody uh, religious? Was he a, an acolyte? Do you know? I don't know. I haven't spoken much of where we've come from. 
Possibly if... the chains perhaps do hold him together in that case. I don't know. Oh. He's more than capable of taking him off around holding his body together. He's used them to dragon haul equipment before. But, but if he's what Raz says he is, then it's possible that somebody with true belief that's antithetical to his might actually cause him pain. He's a cursed fiend, that's for sure. See, see. If Torag hasn't cursed him personally, a forgotten son's power that's filling his bones. And it's a blight to life itself. But if you're going to stand against him, the head of his mallet he works with is the size of this damn door. He'd strike any one of you down in an instant. And I've seen him heat the coals of a furnace with his own breath. Yuck. That's gross. Mm. I mean, it sounds like me on a Tuesday, but... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Marshall. Let's go take that power out of his bones, one at uh, one at a time. I, I think, ah, I think we should... shot Tuesdays. Woo! I, I think we should rescue the other prisoners first, don't you? Uh, let's leave them their plausible deniability. This, uh, this man here would seem to appreciate it. Uh, and uh, we can check those uh, smaller ones there at first, move it on, and then we can go ahead and head on forward. You really think you can do this? Of course. We've done it before. Uh, we've done worse. And Torag or whatever. I mean, gods you pray to. Guide your heads. At least one of them's a hero. And heroes do great things in times of need. Um... <laughs> we have at least one hero. <laughs> at, least so, at least one, one hero. hero. You know, with his directions, at the end of the hall on the western side, he went she can point out to everyone the sound of hammers and anvils and a strange bubbling. That almost way. certainly lava. Let's do it. So not that way. Arrange yourselves as you please. What, what, there what? are several doors on the eastern end, We're but the man will be able to very quickly tell you that these two doors at the northern side are just latrines. There's okay. nothing of interest, no use in there. But both of the doors, as you come around to the bottom of this hall and see there is one set in the far end of the hall and one off the side, uh, both down there, yeah, at that farthest end. Mm -hmm. Both of those lead into Renthar's chambers. Renthar's chambers. And uh, as you kind of arrange yourselves there, now you can see it with some light. Go ahead and move your tokens wherever you want them, and we'll get the, uh, we'll get, or maybe move your minis and we'll get the tokens moved there. Anyone want to move next to me? I'll probably uh, do Trishik, that. Preferably, one more hero I point. would want to be in the front, invisible. Frivolous um, or oh, bust, yeah. says Darmasen. Um... Can you do that yourself, Before or do you need help? Before we go in, I, know, I don't know how it is recalling knowledge on the same creature multiple times. If Once you, you get... see him and you are physically in his presence, I would let you roll again okay. after just having, like... Well, no, actually, you did see him with the joint uh, uh, I saw that. Share senses. I did the check, and I was... I figured... You've leveled up since then, though, so I would let you roll it again. Yeah. Once I would you like physically to try see to, him. I'd like to try, yeah. So you want to switch to recalling knowledge as you go on the door, or...? Um, I'm going to stay on... Stay on your inspiration. Yeah, defense. I just wanted to see if I can do that again, see if that was an option. I'm right. going to trug a J Dr I, I want to do some preliminary stuff. I'm going to trug a Drake Heart Mutagen. Um, and I'm going to pop invisibility before we open the door. And I'm okay. going to cast Heroism. I'm going to cast Blur on Marshall. <laughs> While we're at it. Uh, yeah, you got time to prep. You know you're going in here to fight well, whatever like this beast is. With a giant and he can't hear thing. the sounds of battle and spellcasting from this room. I'm going to switch uh, Big Red into Rectangle. <laughs> Bucker engaged. And then uh, for the first time, uh, Resme will gather energy around her um, into almost uh, what looks like, uh, it looks like time accelerated and she'll disperse it out. Um, I'm going to cast a seventh level haste and we will all be hasted for a minute. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So and she's, and as she's casting that. So I'm, I'm already blast. like blurred, and now I'm. You know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what happens so, when you give Marshall an energy Big O, Haste O. You like got all this. your preparations ready. <laughs> I imagine quickly after the haste and the bless. We're gonna run, yeah. We would yeah. each probably each use one round before I imagine you would cast the doors open into the chamber. And no one's here. It's empty. <laughs> Surprise. And you would reveal... The animal's on the other side of that door. Damn. You would reveal a truly massive chamber here, uh, lit not by these forge-like sconces set up into the walls that is most of the rest of this area, but lit simply by a large bubbling pool of lava being fed from a pipe overhead slowly drizzling in more 
keeping the heat of the pool high. The room is less a uh, worked stone hallway or chamber. Move or change the room, so light. Um, like the rest of the area is. Ooh. But is instead seemingly carved out, perhaps mm. of what was originally a natural cavern, into a much more enormous vaulted workshop. Several massive anvils, as the man had told you, the size of a horse, sit around this pool of lava with a group of more weary, beleaguered slaves toiling away at works near each of these. Stood up on some, what in any other situation would almost be comically small little wooden step stools to be able to, be able to even reach the surface of these massive things. Standing at the far side of the chamber, you see a hulking beast. His flesh green, looking rotted, ragged and torn in different, in different places, looking near like a zombie. There's no hair anywhere that you can see, and the skin of his face is pulled taut against the front of his skull. He has no eyes. His mouth hangs a bit open. His nose gone entirely with just a pair of slits in the holes in the bones of the skull. And through each of those orifices, you see nothing but the fires of a forge lit behind them. He turns, sees the group of you, I imagine, crashing through the door, weapons in hand, buffs mm -hmm. ready, charging in for action. He turns from the slaves he's overseeing, this huge hammer in one hand. It probably wouldn't fit through the door you're coming through. And grins. I'm gonna need everybody to roll me some initiative. One more spider climb. Sorry, that was the other one. Does he have chains on him? He has chains wrapped around uh, what looks like nice. ill-made or ragged big bits of plate and leather, almost wow. patchworked across his body. I want to take what it rolled to. Twelve. <laughs> it's almost. I don't oh, actually want to go first. Right. It's real fun wearing these until I need to. And I imagine, if you come in the door, he calls out closely with this grin. Ah, ah. You have one chance to join me work on the anvils. I don't expect you to take it. And truth be told, I prefer you didn't. Battle cry. Oh, oh yeah? I'll show you something to work with. Yeah, give me a battle cry real quick. Nice. Can we get a battle cry off on him? Is he, Is he in him? range? Uh, 30 feet. 30 feet, right? I don't think he'll be close enough. Yeah. He's too, you can yell at him, but he'll be close enough Darn. to intimidate him. I rolled okay, too. All right. Uh, resume. Initiative. Uh, it's going to be a 30. 30? Roisin? Uh, Roisin is going to get a uh, scouting, right? Yes, he was scouting. Okay, so scouting. 34. 36. 36. Raz? 37. 37. Much better initiatives this time. Probably good. Didn't Marshall? Roll a two. I also got 36. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go oh, first? Oh, yeah, Marshall and Roisin, you must go first. Um, If you don't mind, let me go first so I can get punched in the face. I, I do chic. get more punched. <laughs> 38. <laughs> Jeez. Rogue Always doing works. rogue things. He also got a 36. We'll put him right in the middle. So as you guys charge into the room... Uh, Do we have a token? I, oh, do I have a token? Yeah, well, I want to oh. see what this is. Do I have a token? Oh. I absolutely have a token. <gasps> that thing is cool. He's man. an absolute unit. That's, a, that's not a token, that's a unit. That's a unit. An absolute unit. Careful with him, because uh, his base did come detached when we were moving studios. Uh -oh. so should be fine. Ooh, look at him. Look He's at pretty this based. lad. We have table cam. Does table cam work? Is it on? Ah, can you turn table cam on real quick? It's on. There's a green light on the back ah, of it. Whatever, it won't work. That's fine. We can show it up later. Uh, Trishik, you come into the room. You are the first to act here. He seems more than happy to meet this battle. What do you do? So, uh, I am invisible. And you are I invisible. Stealth for my initiative. And is it just him? And it's slaves? him and a bunch of slaves, some which are very nearby to him. And even as you come in here, the slaves kind of glance, not really sure what's what's happening, but almost more fervently return to working. <laughs> Don't want to piss him off right now. <laughs> well, 
uh, it's a big room with a. It's a pretty big room. Yeah, ceiling's ceiling. probably 15, 20 feet above. Uh, Whoop. Climb, let's, let's scam up the wall I'm here. Go over the wall. <laughs> I'm gonna go up. Um, I have 20 feet because I took fleet. Okay. Climb so you'd be able to get up up the wall to the ceiling corner in one move action. And then, plink plink, two shots from my bow. All right, give me some shots. Shot number one against his flat-footed. No! no. <laughs> That's not even fair. I right. hate you so much. That's the big bleed, too. Yep. If he bleeds. He does not. Ah, okay. He is a corpse. Well, that means he can't die. That's well, not true. I'm going to take this fancy no, handful of dice kill. here. And, uh... Five, nine... 14, 22, 44, and he's pinned. Yeah, All DC right. 10 athletics check. It's yeah. an action that he has it's an to action. spend. Yep. If he takes this hit. Let me double check. He does not have the thing I was thinking. Okay, he takes his hit, takes this arrow, and just laughs. And I'm just going to wave at him as I reach back, grab another one, and shoot at him again. Hmm. Uh, 13? 15. Okay, so... 36. 36 on a second attack on a 13? That's a 15. 15 oh. on the die. 26 minus 5, 21 plus 15. Okay. I was double checking before I ruined your life. 36 does not hit. That second arrow is going to glance off of his heavy armored plate. I don't want to crush your dreams that early, but... uh. They've been crushed. Rez. Um, I don't want to crush your dreams of a 36 not hitting immediately. But um, so is immediately. he still flat-footed? He is. Yeah, he sees you now. I have one initiative. Rogue. He did. Rogue. I'm a rogue. One initiative. Oh, flat-footed. Oh, well, flat-footed, you will hit him then. Yeah, flat-footed, you will hit him in that second arrow. Right, you have it for the full round because you beat him in initiative. It's wow. not your first attack? It's the full round? Yep. Okay. It's the, Because it's surprise attack. Oh, right. Yeah, you do have it for the full first turn. If 36 anyone will hit is flat-footed. Beat, would be flat-footed to me for the entire first round. Because he rolled stealth for initiative. Yeah. Right. Waved at him stealthily. So. And then stealthily <laughs> shot him again. Well, I'm no longer invisible at that point, so I can... Right. But he's still like... Yeah. 23. A roll. Yes. 23, so... There's a lizard on the roof. 31. There's a lizard on the roof, yeah. <laughs> and... Oh, well, the turns of table. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, first things first, I'm going to... Actually, um, sustain bless. I forgot what the word sustain was. Um, that way, the emanation bigger. gets bigger. So it's a 10 foot emanation now. And then I'm going to use um, hypercognition as papers start flying off of Raz as he's thinking, and I want to make six recall knowledge checks. Is that two him. actions? It's one. One action for hypercognition? Yeah. Okay. Um, just put a bucket. Oh, like, actually, I have 60 20s. <laughs> I can do that because they're secret checks. Mm. They're secret checks. And for using standard Bardic Lords, plus 19. Plus 19, okay. Because the Linguistics Lord would be plus 23. Unless it's uh, occultism. Occultism might be higher for you. Yeah, last time it was religion. Oh. Yeah. So, as you look at this thing, you're aware of a couple of things. It is most certainly. Uh, almost positively the heresite of which you had been uh, you had been told before this thing is a manifestation of evil divine energy uh, it's it is undead but not in the same way like a zombie or a ghoul is it is almost a curse uh, and as such uh, attacking it with any sources of like an opposition of the good magic any sorts of good damage would be ex good extremely <laughs> effective against this creature I don't know if you have literally any of that, but, you know. We do. Roisin exists. Roisin does. You also know the fires in this thing burn so hotly. Now, obviously, you couldn't hurt it with fire. But it is so reinforced. It is, it, it's like a walking volcano inside that, that actually cold is equally ineffective against it. It is too superheated to be frozen by conventional means. And you have one actually put him straight um, in the seventh circle of hell. So, good magic, yes. Fire magic, no. Cold, no. Um, that's all the important stuff. Everything else is just nonsense. And then I'm going to. Where did we leave off on the, the the dragon plague? Where was that at? Oh yeah, now I remember Inspire Defense. 
So as this thing takes these two arrows into it, it starts to plod forward, honestly still just laughing, but a very different laughter than the Dwerger you had faced briefly before. He is going to stride up. How far away are we? 5, 10, 15, 20. He He's going to stride up 20 feet forward. to break out of the That's arrow. literally unfailable. He I will know. do that, he though. Takes he an action. Breaks his foot out and walks forward, smile on his face, reaching down towards the chain wrapped around his body. He raises the arm that has the mallet, and he grabs a bit of the chain and unhooks it from himself. A massive, curved, almost sickle-like, jagged bit of ruined metal at the end. And as he comes up here, is the closest, I imagine, it's probably Rasheen. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He lashes out with that hand, the chain rattling through his fingers as that sickle-like blade slashes down towards her. It's going to be a f- 40 to hit you. 40 to hit me? Uh, solid hit, uh, but not critical. Not critical is what you're going for in boss Yes, fight, it so is. That's good. Uh, do you have any interaction with fire damage? Uh, I reduce it by five. Okay. Um, you take one point of fire damage because I rolled a six. Hey, there you oh. go. I was almost like, eh, I'm not going to bother rolling it, but I'm glad I did. It worked out. And you are going to take 34 points of slashing damage. Okay. Uh, so she's going to throw that shield in the way uh, and activate shield block. Uh, so 34 minus a hardness of 13 is going to be a... Right, I get... Uh, okay. Yeah. 34 minus 3 is 31 minus a hardness of 13, 21, 18. I'll take 18 points of damage. As he slashes it down and this kind of almost crushes through you as much as it slices, yanks the chain back, pulling the sickle back into his hand. <laughs> you could work for us here forever, but I've been bored. I'll enjoy this. Oh, the poor man's been bored. Rusheen. It's not a very good offer. Right, then. And I believe we're still all hasted, right? We are all hasted. You're all hasted for the whole fight. I did forget that twice, but I'm not rewinding, Nick. Um, It's fine. Vile, cursed presence. We have magic of our own and a goddess of our own behind us. Milani, talk me! And uh, she's going to swell uh, with divine power, uh, and she's going to grow, actually, almost uh, to, to actually match his height, uh, as brambles and briars kind of form over her armor, and uh, a uh, sheen of uh, divine light will play about her sword. Uh, so that's divine vessel. Large Roshin. Roshin is large now. It's a battle of titans. Oh, yes, it will exactly be. It's going to be the kaiju center. fight. It's going to be great. <laughs> That's more like it. Until he gets hit with the holy good, and he's like, oh. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you can put that back, please. <laughs> um, and I'm large, so I have 10-foot reach now, and so I'm going to uh, bring a, a sword down to smash Adam. Um, I've got heroism, so. Uh, that's a 14 on the die, so that's going to be 14 plus that is 37, 38, 39, 39 to 39 hit. 39 will hit him. All right, damage, damage, does that, that's it, that's it, that's it, okay. I'm just not going to roll the fire damage on Flick. That's fair, um, yeah. That's probably for the best. Uh, so that's going to be 6, uh, 11, 15, 15, and minor curse still. 15 and 6, 21, plus a point of good damage. 21 Woo! and a point of good damage. Ooh. Your sword slashes down, cutting through him, uh, hacking into this heavy armor. This massive plate he has drawn around his body, and he shrugs and shoulders it a bit and just kind of grins. <laughs> that's all. Uh, that's I've got an action left. You, uh, do, no. you raised it. You have an action left. It is not at all. I'm going to raise my shield. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then. No. <laughs> Marshall. <laughs> 
You think you like that? You're gonna love this. But first, the responsible dwarf. Take a little bit of a side step. Thanks to Resme for hasting me. Yeah. I too can become a giant fiery titan. Go Mega Marshall. Oh, oh there he goes. Everyone's getting huge. Who's the hero point to go huge with? Uh, GM for life's got you with that one. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> the Beach Boys song starts playing. Make it big. Do, 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 do. Hey, Roisin, I think I make might make things a little easier. Oh, I can't Old even. Old Slappy. I can't even get bigger than you. And then I'm going to use my last action to give him a good old trip. So you got 15 foot reach right now. How far back are you? 20 foot reach. 20 foot reach? If he's Old huge. Slappy. And he has a reach Oh, he's weapon. huge. He does have a 20 foot reach. Yeah. You can actually yep. hit him from all you, the way You actually there. have more reach than he does. <laughs> wow. He has a freaking chain whip and you have more reach than he I'm does. See, you're this. big. I am bigger. I'm going to pass a... this to you then since you don't have a plus one. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and give him good old sweepy sweep. Alrighty, so that is a one. I am definitely going to spend yeah, Don't fall Excellent. down yourself. That would be funny. <laughs> but don't do it. That is a six. That is better. better. It is significantly better. Six times better. So also, that's a 34. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, 34. I'm uh, 30. Sorry, just playing 30 for Yeah, 30 athletics. will hit him and it'll pull, and he stumbles a bit. He's not terribly dexterous, but it's not going to be enough to pull him down. He's got enough of a plan. He's got so much weight from his armor. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's right. Let's see. And then that was Move, rage, action. switch, swing. Yep, yep. resume. <sighs> all right. Take it all. And uh, she'll uh, throw um, a uh, level seven magic missile at him. <laughs> it's gonna play music on his head. <laughs> well, he's taking damage. Is wait, where's the button for machine gun fist? <laughs> <laughs> what the button? It was a glitch. We cannot reproduce on demand, but it would be great right now. So I'm gonna roll a six D D four and double it. What if That's we're done? done. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, you get 12? 12 D4, level 7. That's a lot of missiles. Yeah, it's oh. 4 missiles per, per so, action. So uh, 36 plus 12 is going to be 48 points of force damage. Okay. And then Resme kind of shakes a little, as if kind of like... Chest hands. Chest hands. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. He takes all of these. You have one action left because you're hasted. Uh... It can't be used to cast a spell. Why not? Why not? Oh, yeah. Haste. Stride, it can be used to stride, stride or strike. Stride or strike is all uh, you need with Stride. Action. Spider climb. Up the wall to Dorin Trishik. There you go. That'll do. Nope. Trishik. Well, unfortunately, you appear to have joined me at a very bad time. Uh, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Brian. You see, um, he's now in flanked territory. I must go provide this. Have fun. So I'm going to pop invisibility again. Okay. I'm going to go back behind him with my haste move action. Okay. And then I'm going to drop. All right, you're going to fall 20 feet. You can cat fall that safely? I can cat fall 50 feet. All right, so <laughs> two actions down. Here, Wait, you re invisibility from what? That's free. My armor. All right, yeah, I, I forgot three. it was free. So you move, drop, two actions left down behind him. Clock off. Get his ankles. That's all you can reach. I mean, the yeah, there you go. His ankles are as big as you. Well, I'm going right. to re-roll that. Yeah, he's actually moved to flanking position. Sorry. I'm going to re-roll that seven as my first hit kind of digs into him, and I'm like, oh, fantastic, and uh, use the second claw to actually go in for the strike. Ha! Much better. So, 44. 44 will hit him. And he is flanked. He is, in fact, flat-footed. So, bucket of dice. Okay. Three, six, 12, 17, 25. Okay. And then, second attack, which will be at a minus five. Four. Minus four, because agile hands. What is that, a one? Yep. That's a one. Well, here you go. <laughs> so, 
Frivolous use of hero points. You, the chat requested it be used frivolously. Um, I mean, second attack's not entirely frivolously, but... I already hit once with the second yeah, attack, that's and fair. that was at a minus five. That's fair. That is true. I think I hit him again because that's the same thing I rolled. That's another 16, so... 37 to his flat-footed. 37 to his flat-footed will catch him again. See? Value. You got you to get Value. there. Value. All right, Rails will be rolling that. Um, what is that directly south of Russians? That's a... 28. Thing in the way, or is that just a slave? All of the other tokens around the room are slaves working around the area. There's some at the southern end of the room as well. Most of them are gathered around the anvils that span this pool of lava, around this massive pipe that's feeding it. That's the one next to Roshin ran away in fear. No, he oh, seemed, he is gracious. definitely He's... still working. He's like, they're all clearly, the slaves are absolutely gripped with terror, but they are too <laughs> afraid to <laughs> provoke his ire here. They're, so, they're not aiming to leave. They're I not can... really getting anything done. They're kind of like cowering and shaking, but trying to like s still move hammers and tongs like they're doing anything. I want to put Marshall where that thing is. I want to put Marshall where that slave is standing. Um, I'm going to step forward with my free move action. Burr my Dirge of Doom. And then collective transposition. Is is Trishik still invisible? No, he attacked. Uh, I'm going to collective transposition him back up onto the roof and get Roshin to the south of the guy. And I wanted to put Marshall directly in front of me if the slave wouldn't be in the way of him being so big. You can move I, I'm the gonna do slave. It as a, I'm like, gonna, I'm gonna, oh, wait. How many people can you move? Three. three as a seventh level spell. So... So you're be, not moving the slave? So what are you... You're moving Trishik to the I was going to see... But the slave's in the way, but... Um, giant machine south of him. Giant machine south of him. Trishik's on the ceiling. And I you don't gonna... have to. You can just move Marshall like right where you. Well, oh, because you're standing. I'm there. standing there. I have. I would have to move out of the way. Can't you share oh, space? Because yeah, you're Marshall. Rough That's a feat you have to oh, take. Oh, it's yeah. a feat. Well, just... Marshall is huge. I think he's two size categories larger. You can share space for the creature, right? Like, I think he is so large, you can share I mean, space. I mean, considering how tight is that, so because yeah. then I'm just gonna put him directly in front of me or on top of me. I think at two size categories larger, you are so big that you can move through. I know you can't. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I know He's you can't so do big. move action stuff. I don't think. Yeah, I don't know that that's that's a that's a thing. Uh, what are you doing with your third one? Um, Piddly poop. Um, it's definitely something there. Yeah, I guess if I can't get Marshall, then I'm just gonna get myself to the ceiling. <laughs> boop. Actually, no. Can you stay there? Yeah. Oh, okay. I have climb speed, but no. Wait. Um, so a question, just because this is kind of weird. Since he has a completely free action that he can use to move as well, could he, he that. put? He already did. Okay, I missed that. Yeah, part. I, I was gonna that. say you could put someone there and then just move if they're that big. I would have still an action left over. You could spend the no, action well, first. Oh, Doom. Oh, Doom. What are you doing with collective transposition? Yeah, as I'm gonna try to move that slave out of the way. Okay, he's yeah. gonna make a well save, but it's gonna be terrible because he's a slave. Uh, he's absolutely going to critically fail, and he's going to go wherever you want him to. In the hallway. As far away as possible. Yeet him into the hall. That dude's very confused in the hall with his hammer. Go take a break. <laughs> <laughs> You're on break, buddy. Trishik, building up a horde, and I encourage for, uh, frivolity and or the cancellation of certain illegal services. Enabled Why, by LaRopa in the chat. And then do you have an agent? Okay, you moved. Um, He's dirt. Dirt. You dirt. dude, you selection. Yeah. yeah. So you wanted me south of him? Yeah. And True Sheik on the ceiling. So you um, want that configuration? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. I was trying to get Marshall in front of me. And as he appears, I mean, uh, yeah. as everyone just kind of moves around as Raz is casting, he, uh, this giant being looks around. Right here, right here. <laughs> you, you think this is an advantage for you? And just kind of opens his mouth, and you can see the smoke and fire start to dribble out of it. Oh boy. He turns his head up and exhales a huge plume of smoke that goes all the way up to the ceiling, filling the area up to about 20 feet around him. Hmm. Um, and you immediately 
feel an intense burning as this cloud of smoke is interspersed with red hot forge embers eddying and swirling through that seem to keep appearing and sliding across your skin. It's like you've been shoved into a furnace. You hear a very brief outcry of pain from the slaves nearest him before that immediately falls silent as mm. all five of the slaves on the southern end of the pool die. Who else within 20 feet of him? Trashik, Rasheen, just you two? Uh, Raz. Raz. Well, I can't see you, Raz. I yeah, literally Raz can't is see you behind me. Yeah, yeah, he's within 20, though. I'm within 20. And, and I, Marshall and I, so is also Marshall. within 20. And, uh, like on the very edge, but yes. As he Got your toes in there. blows this out, the smoke filling the chamber here, uh, much of the chamber, you would see him almost physically deflate. You see his armor hang loosely over his torso as he expels all of the air that seems to be inside of his entire body. It doesn't even appear that he has like proper organs or anything within himself. And his armor, ragged, jangling against itself, tattered, he turns, what? Does this provoke a cat attack of opportunity? Uh, it, it would. It's I'm gonna not, trip him. Well, <laughs> oh, you can't trip me. You have to strike him. No, oh, it actually doesn't. It's oh, it doesn't. No, it's not. It's not, not manipulated at all. Actually, <laughs> it's oh, actually okay. just evocation and fire and divine. So oh, well, there you go. Yeah, it actually doesn't. It seems like it probably should, but it doesn't say. It says that it doesn't. So I guess we'll go with that. Mm. I, I was um, just curious because it sounded like he was casting. All, this. So is it's it fire quick. damage? It is fire damage. It's all very quick that this happens. The smoke fills the area, and all of you, it's not thick enough for you to completely lose sight of the battle that's going on here, but it is enough to really blur this engagement. And then he's gonna whip this chain up over his head, back around the hook, whipping through the air towards Trishik on the ceiling. Nimble dodge. The goal is not to be crit. He is frightened one. He is frightened one. It's gonna be a 45. Exactly a crit. Exactly a crit. Uh, Roshin is going to throw her arm in the way, and the thing is going to rake through her arm and actually impale it. That's Mother's Mindfulness. I'm taking the crit. You're going to crit you? Yep. Okay. You're wow. you're big, and you can do that. You're large enough. Actually, he has to be adjacent. Is he adjacent? He looks adjacent. It's like 20 feet. I'm tall. You're large, I don't know if I'm that and tall. you could reach me. You're like, what I you think? think he'd be five foot. Yeah, you, you, you could probably reach 15, him, but he's not adjacent. So. What about, okay, what about so Get Down Mr. President? Work. That is the Get Down Mr. President. That is Get Down Mr. President. No, this slams through Trishik. Uh, you you don't have any particularly fire resistance, do you? I got a ring. Like oh, you have the ring, right? Everybody else. Have 13 oh, I'm them. gonna roll it because it's gonna be multiplied by two, so ring. maybe it does any damage to you. It doesn't. Um, no fire. Uh, but you are gonna take math, 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 math. math Sixty math. something. Con I had a number, and then I forgot it. <laughs> you shouted a number at him, and blew it out of his head. <laughs> Uh, it is 22. going to be 64 points of slashing damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as it rips through you, I need you to make me a fortitude save. Dumb question. He's doing a lot of gas and fumes and stuff. It has nothing to do with... It actually right. doesn't really have anything to do with inhaling. It's just okay. obscuring and hot. So okay. inhaling, it's not doing anything particularly bad to you. And you said fortitude. Fortitude save, yes. Yeah. Hmm. So 17? 38. Now the 38... As you see this thing, this hook kind of slash through Trishik's armor and rip through in the haze of this smoke, you see the hook, it cleanly cuts through the side where it hits, but it catches on something. It doesn't look like his flesh. You see a bit of a glow pull out of him, but snap back into his body as hmm. you're going to be okay for now as he slams that hook back down behind him, turning up towards you. Uh, Roshin... This is going to be a little bit of an awkward one because this does damage at the start of your turn. Make me a reflex save against the cloud. A reflex save against the cloud? Yep. The I mean, it is, it is like it's, it's the cloud fireball. The cloud. Huh. May I bulwark it? I would say you absolutely can. All right, great. Um, <laughs> it is very much hitting all around you, so. Uh, oh, come on. Oh, almost was a 20. I'm not doing that. Take that hero point for that. <laughs> not today! I'm not gonna see that 20 show up and then tease me. 
Yeah, 11. Better. That's more like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought, Dai. That's what I thought. Well, think next time before you bait me. So that's going to be a 34. 34 is going to fail. Uh-huh, okay, but not critically fail. Not critically fail. fail. Thank you, Darmassen. You are going to take 46 points of fire damage. Oh, Ouch, my, my son. Temp oh, no, my temporary And points. you are blind by the embers. Oh, okay. Hmm. These stinging red hot coals flying through the air, whirling in this almost vortex of forge smoke, strikes out your vision in an instant. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> All right, so that happens at the beginning of my turn. That's the beginning of your turn. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Give me a minute. Kind of throw a wrench in things a little bit, I think. It's okay. It's okay. I got this. I got this. Uh, let's see here. Sweet cheek. And uh, Divine Light is going to try to power this blindness off. That's a Restore Senses spell. Ooh, that's a spell you should definitely have by this level. Uh, duh. Making sure it's signature. Give me just a second. It uh, is attempts, totally signature. Attempts to counteract this? It is an attempt to counteract. All right. So I'm going to cast a level 5 version of that. I'm going to use, like uh, I'm gonna like use this hero like that point. Number. That's a bad number. That's a good number. That's a better That's number. That's a better number. That's a 14. And it's just plus my spell attack roll effectively. I believe so, yeah. But it's functionally that. 36. 36. As your vision is burned out by this searing uh, fire, you focus on this magic and it doesn't quell the burning pain. But you see your sight come back in. Uh, you are going to successfully counteract the blindness. <sighs> Almost really bad. Right, now, so he's still regular concealed, just by the smoke swirling around him, but you're no longer blind. Okay. Right then. I, know, I probably need that card back. I'm going to need it for some other people, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. I only got two blinded cards. A reflex save, you say? Yeah, you know, shut up. We know you'll be fine. <laughs> roll a one. Do it. I'm going to wave you to roll a one and die instantly to the fire damage. Think, Even on a one, I think I'd be okay. My save's really high. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we could test that theory. Oh boy. All right, Shane. I have a hero point. Don't worry. Was that two actions? That was two actions. So you have yeah. one you plus more. haste left. Yep, yep, yep. So I have two actions, one plus haste left. Okay. Um, it's probably better to think of it as one plus haste because the haste action is quite specific. That's it is. true. Yeah. Right, then. I think you've done quite enough with that, and she's going to reach out, uh, she's going to drop the sword, uh, reach out and grab the chains, so, to try to stop him from flinging it around, and also apparently he doesn't like that. All right. Uh, so make me an athletics with your, <laughs> your athletics. He, he doesn't like that. Dwarfs don't like it when you yank on their chain. I yanked his chain. Uh, that's a seven or a one. That's a seven. Probably doesn't matter. Probably not going to get there. I don't think either of those is going to get there. That's a 28. So I'd say the most logical action you're really going for is attempting to grab him, basically. Okay. Because um, it's still wrapped around him. He just has the end of it with the hook in his hand. You can see you know, the model that you made me so well. It is wrapped around his whole body still. So you try to grab a hold of that. And as you do, he's got this hook back behind him. He doesn't so much swing, but just bunts you with the head of the hammer. And as you're grabbed on your weight kind of forward, that's going to critically fail and he's going to push you prone. Okay. Uh, so uh, that'll knock her prone and uh, she'll just kind of, let's see. Uh, I really don't want my AC to take that much of a hit. Um, she's going to kick out uh, with her, well, that's a fist attack technically. Uh, she's going to punch uh, with her empty fist. Okay. Uh, just try to crack him one. Minus four. Uh, that looks like a single digit on the die. And the three. Okay, so uh, that's uh, probably not going to be enough. Marshall, make me a reflex save. Hold on, Roshin. <laughs> Rectangle. Sudden charge. I'm trying to reflex save first, though. Oh, right. <laughs> Do you believe it? I really hope you pass this because I'm super ready for this. Like, that's a two. Man. Nine? That's like a nine. Is a nine with a dot? Oh. Nine. And what's my reflex? Not good. Oh, good. 
Well, I have to fight darkness, but I doubt that's going to do anything. What is the fight darkness? It, it defies the darkness. It I sounds mean, like it's for. I don't it think sounds it's for like being blind. blind. I think that's for. It might be blind fight. Is it blind fight or is it just you can see in like magical darkness? Uh, give me. Two I'm pretty sure that's you can see in magical darkness. We roll it real quick. If, if, if it, it doesn't even matter, then it doesn't matter. Uh, that is a two. That is a two. But it's well, a let me let me actually double check. So this. what's the critical failure effect? A lot of damage. A lot of damage. Oh boy. All right, let me double check the by darkness real quick. It says, <clears throat> Agent Dwarven mag uh, wielding magical darkness, you've honed your dark vision and sworn not to use such magic as yourself. You gain greater dark vision, enabling yeah. you to see through magical darkness, even if it normally hampers your dark vision. So it doesn't actually help with, well, with blindness. So what's okay. your total on the reflexive? 23, now that it's a two. Uh, 23 is definitely going to critically fail. Uh, you are going to take 96 points of fire damage minus your resistance. Which is five. So so 91 points of fire damage. Uh, and you are also blind. Awesome. You know where he is. That doesn't prevent you from doing the rectangle and sudden charge. He hasn't moved. Perfect. Well, this puts a little bit of a damper in my thing, but... Just roll well. I'm, I'm gonna try. You can Long, still, yeah, you can still do this. You just have well, a 50, I'm 50 still doing chance. rectangle, and I'm still gonna sun charge. I'm just gonna go ham. So. Blind Marshall still scary. Blind Marshall is probably more scary than blind, regular sorry, Marshall. Blind Mega Marshall. He could do I anything. You don't know. He has a he Where's has a sedan. So you have 50, 50 blind check first. 11 plus. Don't use the Malachite. It will betray you. It didn't. It's a oh, 17. 17. Right. Then the, the attack check. roll. <laughs> All right, that I gotta remember the trick. You gotta go to one. Gotta go to one. <laughs> He's got to go cheat codes. Cheat codes. Gotta put his Konami code into his uh, North right, Foundry right. D20. <laughs> in the tray. <laughs> that oh, was the best. That's probably definitely not a line of the dice tray. All right, so let's, let's try that again. It's the ritual. I can that's do that. an eight. It's an eight. Eight plus full attack bonus. You did. It's swinging at him. Is he? Does True Shake flank him for you? He's only large, so no. Ah. Jake's pretty above him. He's um, got reach, right? Who? The boss Dude, definitely yeah. has reach. <laughs> this is like a whip chain. So let's see. Sorry, math. Uh, plus one from blessing, so thirty-four. Thirty-four is you're gonna come in. No, wait, and wait, wait. I'm sorry. Thirty-five is the plus one. You're gonna oh. feel it hit. And you're gonna feel, even though you can't see it, this mallet slam against something. And everyone else can see it hit him right on the pauldron, and he kind of shrugs a bit and straightens back up and casts it off. Well, it's I have not going to hit. I have one action left from the haste, right? So yep, you have a haste that actually swing again. I, I'll attack again. It's a 50 no 50 into the big yolo swing. Very well, Kite. So, All right. the first, you still got to 50 50. 50 50. That's, That's a miss. Eight. So, that does nothing. And the blindness, you can't see exactly where the target is there. Resme. Who is a proud member of Not in the Cloud Club? You're up. Um, Resume, uh, seeing the cloud uh, float around him, oh. uh, her eyes will glow out with sudden blue fire, and she'll see, and she'll, you'll hear her cast out, Visione Trucar. And um, a vision of exactly where he is and everything he's going to do in the next 30 seconds will flow through all of your minds and the concealment will vanish and you'll know exactly where he is. Uh, that's true target. Um, you will all get to roll twice and pick the highest number on your next strike against him, and you will ignore his concealment. Which actually ignores being blind, too. Correct. Because that's just total concealment. I can see. I <laughs> you can, can fight. In your mind's eye, you know where to swing. And you um, get to roll two d20s on every attack. And before I it's... forget this, Mr. T, 1976, from one nick to another, a hero <laughs> point for Thank Roshin. You. In the what nick that? of that, time. That's uh, one. Uh, that's one action. Yeah, one action. Um, and then uh, she'll uh, take a lava rock and pick it up off the ground and slam it into the back of his head. All right, give me an attack. What is that? Seven. Is that a seven? Uh, that will be a 29. Does true target work on you, too? Uh, yes, it does. It's, it's, it's on... 
everybody. It's not it's not on like you guys. No, it's no, it targets him. him. And like anything, it doesn't even have to be your friend. Like Batman could show up and punch him and he gets your target. <laughs> like, I like that. It kind of who attacks you right now. Better. What is that? 18. 18. That's an 18. I like that. That's a 40. It kind of reminds me of Hunter's Mark hit. a little bit. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of in that same vein, yeah. Yeah. You like, can ignore big red arrow. Which is super Over neat. here. Yeah, no save. <laughs> You sure may. I'm not going to be able to roll it against him. Twenty. Okay, uh, that's going to be uh, twenty-five points of weapon, weapon damage. Okay. And, and then uh, I'm going to move action, back right? just a little bit with my last move. <laughs> the I don't like it. All right, Trishik, I need a reflex save, buddy. Cop, cop. Do it. Not, not a one. Not a one. A uh, yeah, I critically succeed. What's your total? I critically succeed. Um, the total, specifically. You probably critically succeed, but it's, it's a decently high DC. Uh, reflex plus 27, oh, 40, yeah, 43. You're probably fine. 43 years. And if I eight. succeed, I critically succeed. So you're up on the ceiling, kind of at the edge of this cloud. <laughs> And uh, like the the drift from his sickle swinging through the air, flurries it enough that you are totally fine. Uh, what do you do? Well, I'm gonna take advantage of my uh, newfound sight through the smoke. I'm gonna drop down on top of him. Okay. <laughs> up, down, up, down. So, what size category is he? <laughs> he's only large. He's big, but he's only large. I couldn't help it. That is not, you, you can, if you're looking to athletics things, you can athletics things on him. He's not that big. Yeah. He's a massive, like, swollen brute of a dwarf. So I'm going to land on him, and I'm going to attempt to uh, grab him so I can stay up high where his face is and start hitting him there. Man, I wish table cam worked right now. I know, right? <laughs> oh, so sad. <laughs> we'll just take a picture for later. I'll take a picture Give me right an athletics now. check. Yeah, I was about to say, do it, do, do it now and post it later. Alrighty, so <laughs> athletics... <laughs> Go to properties. You can drop down menu. Roll again if you want. It's uh, grab. Oh. But I will roll again with the power of hero points. Oh. Needs to be active. So I start to fall off. There we go. But I have gecko grip, so I'm gonna latch on. Table cam. Look at this. It's perfect. Better. Sixteen. So, thirty-seven. Turn it towards him a little bit. 37, you said? Yep. To grab. 37. He's. You, did you You didn't upkeep Dirge of Doom? Dirge of Doom? That hasn't been my turn yet. It's still going. It's still going. That exactly grabs him! <laughs> because of the frightened one! So Do she glance on his shoulders? I am now on his shoulders. He has effectively grabbed, making him flat footed. And, um. I, st I still have a. I don't have a concealment or miss or anything. No, not two target. Yep. Yeah, yeah and two, two target. target. And yep. roll twice and pick the highest, my friend. The roll right. twice. Yeah, we didn't do it on the grab. I think it technically should have been on the grab, but roll twice on its attack, yeah. Okay, dope. Well, uh, this will be at a minus four, and then I'll do my haste, which is full. All right, while you're out ro rolling that, Marshall, been lurking for a while. I'll cut up on YouTube. Well, Glad to see you guys we'll live. Notice Marshall at zero hero points again. Thanks. Seven, so, is seven, high. seven would be the okay. higher of the two. Oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> I don't like those words. Uh, 29. Not a fantastic. Definitely not going to hit him with a 29. But but you're on him, though. And I mean, that's I'm pretty cool. Him, and I have haste. That's true. So first from haste, re-roll due to the true target. Re-rolls once. Target. Once you already used it. It's your first attack. Oh, I on. thought it was on every attack. I thought it was you, on every attack. It's your first one during the duration of true target. Oh, well, then I would not have used it on... You don't get a choice. It's your first attack after... Oh. You get a vision. The first time you hit him, it goes off. Okay. Neat. So, that'd be a mm -hmm. So now it's just... It'd be what? That'd be a 31. 31 will hit him attack. either. You also... You have concealment now, too. Two target gives you one, like, super attack. It oh. gives everybody one super attack. I, I won't even bother with the concealment, I guess. Okay. I know it missed. So you're just... You're on him... He's grabbed. And you can, you guys can all see him, except Marshall is blind. You can see him in the smoke, grabbing on his head, going nuts. He's not really doing much. But I thought True Target got around that. Too. You can see like a vision of the. You can probably see a vision of the guy flailing and swinging at the lizard, just sitting on his shoulders. Raz, get a reflex save. Reflex. Fast rap. 
<clears throat> Fast red? I didn't start the engine. I didn't prime it right. Fast red! Right, 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 right. For a total of a 30. 30 going to fail. Um, so you are also blinded by these flying embers. And you are going to take... Forty-four points of fire damage. Thirty-four points of fire damage. I have a better ring than all of them. Thirty-four points of fire damage. Yes. You have the super fire resistance I ring. I do. He read the name of the campaign when he made this <laughs> character. <laughs> but go ahead. You still get um, your turn. You're just blind. You still have true target, so you can still like see him via vision until you've done something to him. I want to cast agonizing despair on him. Does that have an attack roll? No. Then you shouldn't do that first. I don't know that you can do that if you can't see. Well, you're not fully blinded, you, otherwise you'd you have- He was fully blinded. Yeah, you are fully blinded. He's blind. Oh. Yeah. If you fail, you're blind. Okay. So you, I what don't a, think you can make him a, this is weird, because you get, you ignore concealment. I'd say you could, I'd let you use true target to target him with the uh, agonizing despair. I don't know if that technically should, it definitely isn't Rob, but like, I'm not sure if you can target him with a spell while you're completely blind, but you have true target. So it makes sense to me that ignoring concealment for your first thing would let you target him to with a spell. To be fair, blind says nothing about being able to target people. That's true. So that, that's more, that's spell rules, not yeah. blind. Mm -hmm. It's it's more like you're on, um, have very bad vision now. Yeah, you're, I'll you're definitely, excited. I would definitely let you Cast yes, agonizing despair um, with the true target. Like, what else you can do to the true target? <laughs> Telekinetic projectile. Um, wow. Not my favorite spell, but um, I'm going to do a seventh level spell. You're going to. Raz is just reaching for something this thing might be afraid of and pushing it into the forefront of his mind, forcing him to make a will, sh will save, which is all I got. So as you He's reach, gonna see a very happy, stout, drunken dwarf into this to thing's mind. <laughs> it's very distracted by the lizard sitting on his shoulders, but he's quick to fortify himself. Whatever this thing is, it still has clearly a mind. It still has memories, and it's not happy about you reaching it. He's a villain point. It's got way worse. It's gonna be a twenty-eight. He didn't critically fail. He did fail. He I did need twelve d six. Oh my god. Here's what yeah. I've been doing for my 12d6 <laughs> is these and doubling it. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's what I've been doing for the fire. <laughs> um, so it's 12d6 and he is frightened too. Hey, you want to use these dice? They're way shinier. Yeah, oh yeah, I've, I don't roll the. I have my dumb plastic ones. You need cool Norse Foundry ones. Duh. Nobody one sees my dice, so I don't get the cool hand. dice. <laughs> I have some cool dice. I have the. one's Paizo set. I, mean, I have the Age Ooh. of Ashes set. So 2, 5, 5, 10, 16, 19, 21, 42. Points of mental damage, Ooh, and he's frightened good. too. Um, you know what? Since that happened, so anyways, the the dragon play. Oh, I can't remember what that was. I pull out the book, start flipping through. It. Inspire, <coughs> courage. All right. So plus one to status bonus to everyone's attacks, and then gonna scuttle butt my way back. Scuttle out of the cloud of pain. That's probably a good idea. Hurt. So as he's reeling here, both of this mental assault and the fact that Trishik is just sitting on his shoulders, going nuts on his face. He's gonna fling uh, the chain back and it'll run back rattling through his fingers until his hand is on the base of the sickle part. And he's just gonna reach and swipe up at Trishik on Nimble top dodge. of him. <laughs> just over here playing fricking Dragon's Dogma on this man. <laughs> Shadow of the Colossus. I miss that game. Do you have any penalties to attacks when you're grabbed? I didn't think you did. Yeah, you don't. Okay. He'd Technically can't move. He's, he's immobilized right now. He's immobilized and he's flat-footed to other people. He's, yeah, he's flat-footed to everyone who's immobilized. It's going to be a 44. Don't. He switched don't. to Inspire Courage. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm at 35. Like. 33 base, nimble dodge, 35. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it'll be a regular hit then. You're based. Not a crit. Because a crit would make me very unhappy. Mm -hmm. It's going to hit you for 28 points of slashing damage. I can handle that. And one point of fire. You won't take it. Hey, he rolled a six. No, I rolled a six. Oh. I, I take one. 
he does take the one point of fire damage. Because everyone has some form of fire resistance. Freaking every time your stupid status effects make things miss by one and two. <laughs> Freaking frightened two. Cars are money, man. You're getting so much value today, Raz. It's crazy. He always gets value. Um, Bards always get value. And then... He Call didn't miss. He still hit me. As he just... Yeah, he didn't crit you by the frightened two. Yeah. Like, as he's... I scared the abomination. Swiping at you up here. <laughs> he's kind of staggering on his oh, feet. Oh, on my head off. And you hear a huge sucking sound coming from him. As he opens his mouth and just <laughs> starts to inhale and you see his body fill back up. You see him almost reinflate under the armor as he is just kind of swiping, mindlessly staggering around at Trashik. That's two actions for him to reinflate himself. Is that a spell? No, he's just sucking. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I really just wanted to make you say it. <laughs> I'll read you the text because the, the direct text is actually really good. The forge spurned reinflates its flaccid lungs is the word for word text of what that ability is. Wow. Um, but Rasheen, make a reflex save. I really wish he wouldn't use the word flaccid. I didn't. Anybody. Paizo did. <laughs> I don't like May it. May I have my dice tray back, please? Mm. No. No. It's Raz's now. Uh, I need those back, because, uh, yeah. Your stupid flaccid lungs. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Stupid clouds sticking around. What's that, an 18? That's yeah. A, yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, so, uh, eight. That's a 19. Oh, really? Yep. Nice. Better. Uh, so that's going to be uh, 42. 42 is going to succeed. Yeah. So you are not blind. Cool. Uh, it's like this lingering bit of magic still hanging within you. That, so when he, he reinflates his lungs, he doesn't pull the cloud back in. No. He, you, he, that'd be too easy. It maybe nice. swirls a bit in front of him. You take 19 points of fire damage. I can soak that. That's 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 not terrible. That's a more reasonable number. <laughs> that's a more reasonable number. It's crazy how much damage this cloud does. Oh, I know. And we're just going <laughs> to fight him in it. What else are you going to do? So who's blind? You're blind. Marshall's blind. And Raz, Raz is blind. blind. Okay. And it's pretty evident, probably, from the way they're attacking and moving. Not even holding a book. It's like backwards, upside down. <laughs> it's an upside down book. Um, so the uh, again, this energy is going to channel through her, and this time she's it's going to blast outward in a wave. I'm going to cast Restore Senses at level six. Lets me hit uh, up to ten creatures within thirty feet. So, Raz is within 30 feet? Raz is, uh, is, should be within, within 30, 30 feet. feet. Yeah, All right. Yep, he is. Nice. Give me a counter egg check. All righty. So that's a nat 20. Oh! <laughs> this wave of energy restoring the sight to Raz and Marshall. As you still are feeling this stinging pain, you're still in this burning cloud. Raz, you're out of it now. Each of you can now see. You're still on the ground also. I'm still on the ground? Still, yeah, you never got up, yeah. Prone. Ah, yeah, fair, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so uh, I'll stand up. <laughs> He's kind of busy with the lizard and sucking. That's good, that's good. Uh, and she's just going to haul off and punch him in the face. <laughs> Noise. <laughs> You're the same size. Uh, so I'll take that 19. Probably better. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, that's, let's see, that's... Uh, 42 versus flat footed. Yep, definitely hits. All right. So in divine vessel form, my fist does 2d8 <laughs> damage. In the divine fist of the god, Pep. Fist. Uh, Eat your heart out, Thaddeus Stelmore. Yeah, yep, no, I cast damage. fist. I cast fist. I cast manly I left hook. Sevens. So that's 14 plus 6 is 20, plus 1 is 21 plus an extra point of good damage. 21? 22 total. 22. But one is good. And one of them one is good of damage. One of them is good. Which Raz that has assured me means something. seem to be doing anything. <laughs> really? That, well, does it do the point of damage? It does the point of damage. Oh, okay. But it doesn't seem to be especially powerful. Um, is that you? Uh, okay. Let's see here. Ooh. Stood up, yeah, yeah, struck, and, used your and cast strike. magic. Yes. Marshall, make a reflex save. <laughs> You gotta keep the not blindness. That's good. That's a 12. That's a 12. That's, That's a 34. You are blind again. Oh my God. But you do, you haven't used your true target yet. That's true. So yep, your you vision comes hit back him. for you a moment. Blind doesn't matter for the yeah, before it's attack. burned right out, but it doesn't oh, okay. matter for this first swing, but you are gonna take a bunch of fire damage. Oh boy. 
Um, oh, really, really, really low roll. It's literally 20 fire damage. Take one more than he did on a success, on a failure. So minus five, 15. Yeah, incredibly low roll. Because natural dwarfy stockiness. Oh, did you count my fire resistance in the total? You no, I was giving. I'm just giving you guys totals. I have to do wait. I'm, I'm trying to get like 24 d6 on six times. No so worries. Like, yeah, I'm you're just good, giving you're you guys the full numbers. Ugh. And you all got different fire resistance, so I don't know what it is. Well, so since he's distracted, I figured this is an opportune time to battle potato. <laughs> I can't argue with that. All right. You can't see, but you can feel your way to a potato of safety. I, I, I put it somewhere. Hold on. Sticks his hand and his fiery beard pulls out. Pre-baked. Very, Pre-baked. Uh, Pre-baked. Pre and it's, it's just You're in a, a cloud of freaking fire. A very baked potato. It's a twice-baked potato. Ew. Right, give me a medicine check. Are you going for expert or trained? I am expert. But you, do you want to try to make it expert? It's a higher DC DCs. for higher healing. You can do the trained, or you can go for the expert DC. The expert is just DC 20, right? Yeah, DC 20. I don't know what your mod modifier is, though. I think his modifier uh, just beats that. Let me check here. I actually did beat him 21. Oh, there you go. Then you will get 2d8 plus, plus 10 health back. I, I am helpful. I need help. Twice baked potato. Twice baked potato. Five and one. Five and one, so 16 health. But it, 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 I plus it one from the fire damage. It helps. Like I literally gained all that health back. Yeah, you actually Ooh. undid the fire. You you gained health this turn. Yes, I gained health this turn. That's Now awesome. you got to make sure he loses health. <sighs> two and a haste left. So true target swing, you roll two d20s. Yes. And, and take the highest, highest, and you ignore the Consumer. fact that you're completely blind. What do we got? I see a 15. Yeah, yeah 15 we'll is a winner. We'll definitely take the 15, so plus 26, so that's 41. 41. Yeah, you hit him. Oh, I'm sorry, 42. 42. You hit him. Hitting him is the goal. You know, I'm now realizing that with all the dice we rolled in this last turn, you only do that for your first attack. Right? 15. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, but with yeah we covered that on you. That's that 15. Rolled, that me making him flat footed. Nine. Yeah, nine and a six is a 15. Oh, I, didn't, I can see it going. So, 17. So it's 32. 32 plus one. So 33. So you may not be able to see where you're swinging, but Resme's magic, Trishik's grapple, Raz's inspiration. All come together for you to swing a massive freaking rectangle at this dude. And as you smack him, what happens? As I'm winding up, I just kind of do a quick little twirl like, listen, you think I'm big? Talking to the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slightly hold to on, the side. Let me, let me get an exact character. You think I'm big? And <laughs> I, hear, I hear Trishy going. <laughs> Oh, I just tap his head. Oh, you can just cut. You're sitting on top of him. He's like, over here. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, you think you're big? I'm bigger. And well, if it's one thing I can guarantee, is you're going to hell. S just straight up as I'm pretty sure you're going to dodge as soon as you <laughs> Oh, I'm Shadow. assuming my friend gets out of the way. You see, you see like the hammer this close <laughs> to your face. It, it was about that time. <laughs> he realized. <laughs> just cave his head in through. So as it you just, smash this. All the air he's been sucking up yes. shoots out in an instant, blowing a, a like a hole yeah. through the smoke in front of him and dispersing it some amount. You can switch the yeah. sirenscape and music the, back as the over. Just plows through, just you know the combination of smoke, fire, and just giant greater. And, and before I shrink down, I just have to. <laughs> Trishik, give me a reflex save. <laughs> Try not to die, dude. It's a nine. Nine, it's a nine. nine plus 27, so 36 exceeds a critical. So you, as you get out of the way of Marshall's hammer here, the smoke not immediately dissipating from around you, but you, a skilled thief, able to protect yourself with your cloak and your hood that you have, keeping the worst of the embers away from your body. Uh, you're going to take no further damage, and Rizmi and Raz aren't in the cloud anymore, which is going to go away on his turn. But... As this massive hulking demon, heresite or whatever it is, collapses, deflated, almost like a whoopee cushion, as uh, Marshall slams down at him. <laughs> so crazy. The smoke will start to settle, disperse through the room, revealing not a grand situation. Uh, many of the slaves that were standing around the pile here 
their skin near charred to the bone as they just lay draped across and around the anvil, too afraid to run away to incite Renther's wrath and earning it anyway. You have at least put the beast down. That's a good place for us to stop. Oh, yes. For today, I think. A glorious victory and good a beautiful job, Put that table cam Saving on back one again person. one more time before we go. Yeah, <laughs> before she before I dismount standing it. Standing on top of this this awesome miniature that uh My bunny Nick added. actually made for it's us. Via the power of 3D printing and actually it was this is like your first foray into like 3D printing kit bashing, wasn't it? It's 3D printing kit bashing, yeah. Actually kit bashing the model because that model I found did not originally have that sickle in its hand. It did not originally have that hammer in its Making hand. Making a cool and awesome custom mini for us here. Draping it with the chains and everything. And Came being so good. good at painting. So and painting it up for us. Came out good. Came good. A I like super it. Super fantastic boss encounter. For the triad hideout here. So, good news. The cameras seem to mostly work. Audio works. I think we should have fixed Rasheen's audio issue over the break. She was just he was just turned on a lot. It seems it's not super hot in here, it's even not. after doing it for it's four not. hours. I dare say this <laughs> is a still nice. Excellent. This is an excellent studio environment. I mean, aside right. from the fact that my ears are literally on fire, yeah, everything the is really I don't think that's the studio's fault. Blame the sun for that. The sun's not in here. We've done literally everything possible to stop the sun from being in here. <laughs> Get out, son. But I know it's been quite some time since our last Age of Ashes episode with all the technical and studio moving difficulties we've had. But I think. Do we guys, level again? No. Yeah. Up. I think we knocked it out of the freaking park with this one. Oh, yeah. Yes! I think we have nailed the studio plan. Good job, everybody. We got a wiener. Helped set this up and run it and get everything together, largely <laughs> Derp and our showrunner over here. Thank you, Uncle Squid. We should be back on regular weekly schedule now. We should be back here every Saturday, yep, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, the same time slot we've been in. A much more comfortable, much more functional environment. <sighs> so you guys can look forward to a lot more adventures through the Age of Ashes. We fought our way to the heart of the Scarlet Triad base within Cobbler. What more is there to find here with the defeat of Renther Hearthbane? This giant forge spurned parasite. Kevin! I'll just see you next week. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for being here. Good night, everybody. You just Enjoy your weekends. Dab through oh. the smoke.